Vanderhall versus Lauren Th Southern, and I'm going to put up a little thing so people know what we're talking about. Here we go. Now, personally, I think this is a pretty nice look. I think Zan looks Hello, pretty can nice you hear here. Me? Okay, let's get into it. Hey. Yep, I hear you. Um, is there any echo? Oh nope. Well, we can go speedier. Do we want to go a little faster? We can. We can. Let's let's start it on normal speed. And if people are if people think we can go faster, okay. We can go a little faster if we need to, okay? We want to do 1.25? Okay, we'll do 1.25. All right, we'll start on 1.25 and we'll go from there. 1.25. We'll do 1.25. All right, here we go. And see, I think. All right, there we go. Yep, you have headphones on, so there isn't any echo. Sounds good. No. Thank you, Herzberg. I'm going to turn off alerts. All right, let me just ask my chat. Uh, how's her uh, volume chat? Should I turn her up, turn her down? Is it good? All right, it's good. All right, sounds good. Okay, how you doing today, Lauren? Hello, can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you now. It's when I have my mic plugged in that I can't hear you because I'm an absolute boomer with technology, so I apologize. Is my mic okay now? I'm just using the, Sorry, uh, I'm turn the headphones. Down just a tiny yep, bit. You sound great. No echo, and it Excellent. sounds pretty good. All Perfect. Right. All right. Well, we'll just leave the the blue yeti over there. I'm sorry for being late. I had to find my lighter. I to have the candle on. Little known fact, white women are exclusively powered by scented candles, so it would have been a disaster without it. I understand that. My girlfriend also has a, a scented candle, although she doesn't use it much. But I also know, and I, I, I guess this sort of supports the, um, the more uh, conservative view of women. Uh, in my experience, women also have no body heat. Like, they, they, always, they always want the house turned up as hot as possible. So, oh yeah, one thing I got to do, I got to hide the chat. Hold on a second. Give me I'm gonna have to do this again real quick, cause I gotta I gotta not have the chat. There we go. There we go. That'll be good. Um, no, no, I'm not gonna hide my chat. I'm gonna hide Zan's chat. Okay. Here we go. And we're gonna do this. This will make it look nicer even. Bam. Okay. So um. This joke was funny, in my opinion. I thought it was funny. And uh, I thought it was funny. Yeah, Sorry, that's, I thought it was funny. Heard, yeah, I heard your poor girlfriend's freezing her butt off for you. She oh, is. Yes. We got By the... the way, one of the things that I that I said while I was listening to this, um, while I was while I was listening to this, I was like, oh no, she's not on camera. Having her on camera would have been way better. Would have been way better. I'm sorry. It would have been way better. I, I if I was in Zan's position, I would have insisted on video. AC turned nice and low for this conversation because I sweat like crazy when I sit in a leather. Well, I, I thought I thought she said no, but yeah, she should have. She should have. She should have been on camera, in my opinion. Their chair, so nice and cold. No worries. Well, it's good to be here. I appreciate you having me on the stream, and I do appreciate you uh, admitting in your review of my book oh, that no. you were a bit prejudiced. She but... had video up, but oh no. Okay, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. Then that's that's a, a one hundred percent fair mistake. And first picking it up, and you actually like it. You're a fan of the ABCs of morality. Uh, yeah, overall, I don't think there's anything, um, like, at least on a surface level, that's worth taking too much issue with. Though I'm, I was just curious, and I wanted to see if you would elaborate on um, some of the meaning behind a few of the definitions that you gave. Okay, I am very happy. I'm going to be pausing this a lot, so don't complain. I am very happy that Xander Hall took this approach, okay? Because, um, and, and I'm going to explain why. Because I know a lot of people disagree with me on this. While I think it was a mistake to get into the debate about a children's book, that's like kind of a hard thing. This was a very smart move. Setting out at the beginning that he doesn't really have a problem with the children's book, but that he wants to understand the motivation behind it is a very good move. That is a smart move. Some people will disagree with that, but those people are stupid. And I'm seeing some people in chat, but that is not correct. The book is fine. It's a children's book. We're going to go through the whole debate for this one, God King. I want to do the whole one, okay? Children's books 
are frivolous. That doesn't mean they don't have political messages. They are frivolous. However, they do carry messages. Nobody, listen, on this channel, we made fun of Matt Walsh freaking out about a children's book because it's true. At the end of the day, even if a children's book has questionable messages, it's still a children's book, okay? So, do I feel the same about children's television? Partially and yet yeah, partially yes and no. No, you're not going to call a bad take on that one, okay? Because you haven't listened to me. Television, first of all, children's television is significantly more involved. P children spend much more time with it. And it usually contains a lot more messages than just an ABC book. ABC books are limited in what they can do. I don't disagree that a children's book can't reinforce propaganda. I agree that they can. But you have to be careful so that you don't look like a grown man screaming about a children's book. Let me give you an example of this because this is really annoying me. Ready? Watch this. Imagine if I was like this. Hold on. I got this. Watch this. I'm going to blow you all out right now. I'm gonna, if today is the day in which I fight with my chat. Oh. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Demon Mama's channel. We are going to be reviewing The Little Prince. Okay, this is a children's book. <laughs> you can see the prince is real cute on here. I'm going to open up the page to, oh, what's this? A banker? The, the little prince is talking about banking? What? What's he saying about that? Is he, is he, is he JQing? Is that what's happening? Are they putting a children's message LGQ into here? There you go. You fucking idiots. That's why you have to realize that a children's book is inherently somewhat frivolous. <sighs> yes, I agree that children's books. Yeah, thank you, Ellison. I kind of messed it up. I'll get better in time. If he had walked into here being, <laughs> yeah, I fucking hated your book. Do you know how stupid that would sound? This is how right now, by the way, like, this is the thing. I, I, I love you all very much, but this is why some of you aren't debaters. This is why some of you don't do what I do, and instead you just watch. Because if you walked into this debate and you went, and Lauren said, so what'd you think of the book? And you went, ha, it sucked. You would sound like a fucking moron. You would sound like a fucking asshole moron. You have to, okay? You you have to. It is a children's book. Yes, I know I'm strong. Oh my god, I'm gonna lose it today. I'm gonna I'm gonna lose it today. I'm gonna lose it. Today's the day. Today's the day. Today's the day. I'm gonna lose it. I'm losing it right now. Okay. All right. Let's continue. We're never gonna get through this. We're never gonna fucking get through this. For sure. So. Overall, good book, but there are a few problems you have. That's where we're at. Um, to be fair, the, the problems aren't really with the book itself. I guess... Um, if Damn! I Damn! Based Xanderhal! Damn! That's correct. See what he says there? The problems I have are not with the book itself, but rather the messages that are in it. That is a good move. And if you disagree with that, you are just simply wrong. I'm sorry, you are wrong. Starting up... By pointing out that it is impossible to separate the art from the artist, put her in a position. And that set the frame for this debate. If I were to give my concern in a more succinct manner, I would say, knowing you as a, as a conservative figure, you are certainly conservative and pretty well known for that, um, I feel as though if a left, a well-known leftist figure, we wrote just started. A book for... Ico, we just started, but I'm, uh, I'm, I am in the deep end, because people are very, very angry and can't approach this with like a rational mind. So we're gonna try desperately, but I, I, I am already screaming at the top of my lungs, Ico. I, I love you, uh, but I'm losing my mind today. That's just how it's gonna be. It's gonna be a fun one.
for kids. And the main idea behind it was to teach kids um, like values of some kind, right? Most likely left-wing values. Um, I'm curious, would this not perhaps make you a little bit suspicious? It would depend what the book actually said. And I Damn. See? This was what Vosh recommended, and I agree with this. This was a very good start. Xander Hall started this great, okay? That's what kind of surprised me at first is, and why I quite frankly accepted this debate, is I couldn't believe you would challenge me to debate a book you had never read before. It was now, this was Lauren attempting to shift the frame to make Xan look like a triggered SJW, and he didn't bite the bait. That is good. That is very good, okay? Zan didn't bite the debate. She's like, you hadn't even read it. What are you getting triggered about? And he didn't bite. That's good. Just, you know, there's kind of this degree of internet brain rot people get where they just assume this person is on righty Twitter or this person is on left wing Twitter. Therefore, anything they produce must be completely evil, irredeemable. And I know I'm going to be able to debate them on it because I'm going to disagree with everything they say. And that's just not how the world works. And I have no doubt that there could be a left wing YouTuber or a creator that could write a children's book in which I would agree with everything in it. I would never, you know, straight up assume every single bit of it is. I agree, Vermin. Awful. I agree. Now I have seen left-wing kids books that I've read and I read it and I disagree with the points and I think oh, I don't really think that's quite for children but that's after I've actually opened it up and read it and I don't think the author is as relevant to children's books as people like to think you know are we going to get rid now, of so this is funny and and this is exactly what I'm talking about notice that fucking right now right now Lauren is rap godding about how she's already triggered about him apparently freaking out and there's no evidence of that. Anybody who watches this is just going to see deadpan Zan listening to fucking Lauren Southern freaking the fuck out about ch children's books. She fell into her own trap. Um, say the Jungle Book, because a lot of people consider Kipling to be racist or say Horton Hears a Who, which has become an explicitly kind of anti-racist message, despite the fact that now people... Nuts. Nuts. Shut the fuck up consider Dr. Seuss to be bigoted. So I just, um, you know, even if you don't like me and you don't think I'm a good person or whatever your opinion of me is, which I probably disagree with, I, I don't think the author is as relevant as you may try to portray. But I also think you've kind of worked yourself into a corner here where you have, you've told people you're going to debate. She's me. gloating early on. <laughs> you've worked yourself into a corner here. <laughs> what are you going to do? Do you know how much longer they talked for? How much longer? People, tell me real quick. No, I haven't, O'Donnell. 2.5 hours. In the first five minutes, we're like not even five minutes into the debate. We, we're not even five minutes into the debate. And she's being like, hey, you have nowhere to go from here. Guys, come on. Let's be real here. On the book, but you don't actually disagree with the book that much. So I, I genuinely feel there's going to be a lot of reaches here. But correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I guess we'll see. I'm actually curious, um, because you brought up the idea that the author of a book doesn't really matter, um, especially if it's a children's book where the beliefs of that author aren't necessarily um, apparent on surface level. Um, are you familiar with a phrase, uh, the death of the author? Uh, yes. Yeah. So I, I, what context are you using it with this? Yeah. I guess the idea is that if you have a piece of media and there's no apparent bias or message put in by the author that indicates the author's beliefs, yet you know the author believes these things, and this is a piece of media or art, a book, a movie, anything like that, the idea is that you try to separate the art itself from the artist. Now, if I were to do that with this book, there's, I don't really have all that big an issue with it, like really, um, but what I'm more concerned about is your, what you mean when you say certain things in the book, because I know that like... Yes, and Xander Hall, they are wrong. And if any of them think otherwise, I, I would challenge them to come in here and I will blow them out. Good to see you, Zan. They are wrong about that. They are simply wrong. And I will die on that hill. They are just wrong. You're probably not going to put in everything that you, that you agree with in the book or like it's not meant to be super overtly political. So I'm more interested in discussing your motivations behind the definitions of the words that you put in there. And that's what we could discuss. By the way, Zan, I'm sorry. I'm going to be critical of you here. Please don't take it. To, please don't be hurt. You know, just saying. Yeah, don't 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 be hurt when I critique you because I will. But I have some praise for you as well. Like I think you started this really really well. 
All right, let's do that. And uh, where would you like to start? What are the words that you have the most issue with, let's say? Okay, now, yeah. I think that this was sort of a little bit, this, this ex explanation was a little bit shaky, but the point, the point, yeah, I, I agree that it was a little bit shaky on how it related, but she didn't notice it, so it didn't matter. Zan got out what he wanted to say. Only annoying pedants are going to care about that. Lauren couldn't debate it. I don't, um, I don't want to go over every single one, obviously, because I don't take issue with it's most of them. <laughs> um, but I guess we can start on E. Okay, do you mind if I read it off or? Uh... Yeah, go ahead. All right. E is for equal opportunity. Everyone is equal when they're judged on the same scale, praised if they're successful, and accepting if they fail. Everyone, both boy and girl, of every race and class, should live by the same standards that they should strive to surpass. Don't try for special treatment for your friends or for your enemies. If you lose a game, that's fair. You can learn from the memories of what you might have done wrong and what you can do right, which is always better than a rigged and unfair fight. So, pretty, yeah. pretty good, uh, pretty good rhymes there. I like it. Um, Thank you. I heard you said I dropped some bars. I appreciate that. Big compliment. Yeah, we got some we got some fire <laughs> bars in here. So um, I'm curious because obviously there's a lot of discuss discussion about equality and rigged or fair fights in the political scene. I'm curious if this wasn't uh, perhaps a slight reference to the idea of like um, systemic racism, for example. Uh, what, what was your thought process behind making that particular rhyme? Actually, the uh, the ABCs of of equality, which was the kind of left-wing edition of this book that I wrote this to be a more neutral version of, put just equality for theirs. And okay, this point right here, I think, I think that this was something that should have been capitalized on more. And we're gonna talk about that more. See, what she says is that the entire time, and especially as we get further on, she tries to claim that her book isn't political, but she just admitted in the call that 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 she res made this book as a response to another political book. That could have been focused on significantly harder, in my opinion. And I remember the debate, and I know that Zan didn't nail it quite as much. I feel like I feel like that was a huge a huge points. Ododong, I'm sorry, I think you're wrong about that. You're overthinking that point, I think. They defined it in more of the left-leaning terms of, you know, equality is when you kind of even the scales and everything, which, of course, I I don't really agree with the idea that, for example, uh, you should boost certain people's grades to get into universities dependent on their race. I disagree with that. I think we should be judged on the same scale as people. I okay, well, I'm going to ban you, Odong. If you're going to, um, if you're going to, um... If you're going to just do this, I'm going to ban you because you're being actually annoying today. Today is not the fucking Mama Critique stream. I literally opened this by saying, I literally opened this by saying I've already seen it and I have my opinions and I'm going to react and talk about it. If you don't like that, you can shut the fuck up and go watch someone else. Holy fuck. Or you can sit down and enjoy a good show, and then we can talk about it afterwards. Holy shit. This is this segment is fucking ruined because I'm so angry. But I, but come on. I mm, Okay. Let's let's chill. Man, this feels like old me. This feels like my old streams. This feels like my old streams, doesn't it? Back in the day. When I used to get really mad. I think that um, that creates true equality. I shouldn't be given special treatment if I'm a woman. A man shouldn't be given special treatment if he's a man. I'm pretty sure that's what we call patriarchy. If it's only men being hired because they're men. So I do think this, once again, is something that can lean both left and right. No one, if they're white, they shouldn't be given special treatment. If they're black, they shouldn't be given special treatment. I'd like to think that's not something we disagree on. Um, no, principally, of course not. I'm curious, though, because obviously a lot of very left-leaning people would bring up something like um, white privilege. What are, your, what are your thoughts on that? I think that it is used as something that's far too broad and across the board to tell people's stories for them. And it's really dehumanizing in a lot of ways for people who... So this is really funny. Notice. Okay, I'm doing one more thing. Okay, I'm doing one more rant. I'm going to rant again because I feel it's necessary. Right now, I have another person who's come into chat and said, I watched some of this. It was a shit show. 
Xander Hall really dropped the ball and didn't prepare. We are reviewing it right now. Right fucking now. Sit down and hear the takes. If you already have your, your opinion totally settled out, shut the fuck up until the end. This is a review segment. I know you want to make your very, your little, your little quippy one line review of somebody's two hour debate like, like heard. I know you really want to have it be heard, but what you're doing is you're showing exactly what the fuck I was talking about in the beginning of this, which is that everybody had their goddamn mind made up and are freaking the fuck out about it and they can't approach it rationally at all. So why don't you listen and see if there's some things you didn't notice? Or at least consider that your opinion isn't the only opinion possible on this particular fucking video. I get it. I'm not trying to freak out just on you, but this is like that I literally did an entire intro. I literally did an entire intro talking about like a 20 minute intro to this segment in which I talked about how people don't do a very good job talking about this issue. And I want to make that clear. And chat is actually displaying it live action, like as we go. Like as we go, I am having to, I am, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Just sit down and enjoy. It's, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's just that a lot of people are very angry about this. And a lot of people are very, very angry about this particular take. I did a giant preamble to this segment so that we could at least make it make sense. But I am mad at my chat today. Okay? I'm mad at my chat. Today, I am, I am hard. I am, I am angry mama fucking slapping down on chat. All right? <laughs> DCK Punk, I love you for that. Hey, Demon Mama, I've already seen this. I have my opinion. What's yours? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Dick Punk. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I'm desperately trying to tell you. All right, let's go. All right. Less distractions, okay? Jesus Christ, this is going to be a golden segment, okay? Whose lives are not privileged, and yet they have, you know, white skin. I, I'm not, I'm not for the idea of white privilege. I think that's that's pretty evident. I think it's relevant to consider historical, historically relevant. I don't know about that, Zan. We'll see. L just, let's let's exist. get to the so end, and example, I'll tell you what I think. In a European country, yes, it is more likely that people who are white are going to be the royalty. It is more likely that they are going to be established and wealthy because they've been there longer. They are the ones who established a country. We can talk about that, but there's also peasants. There are also people who are oppressed. There are also, you know, even in the forming of America, I won't compare it directly to slavery, but it's not like the Irish or Italians were thought of particularly highly. So I think that we, we shouldn't use these terms that really work people into boxes and deny their personal life experience and history. My personal history, my grandmother was a war or orphan who was sent to uh, orphanages. Uh, if you don't think that Lauren Southern sounds Canadian, you don't understand Canadian accents. Lauren Southern says mega movement. Lauren Southern says the mega movement. That is the most Canadian thing I've ever heard in my entire life. She totally sounds Canadian. She's like, uh, I didn't really think about the mega movement and homes in Australia and had to escape because she was horribly abused and got on a boat at 16 to Canada where she grew up homeless and dumpster diving. You know, yeah, I, don't she think says she, I think it would be horrible to say she had a privileged life just because of her skin color. So I really reject the notion that we can just assume everyone as white, everyone who has white skin has some sort of privilege. But I do think it's relevant to say in some areas, people with white skin may be more likely to have privilege or wealth. Do you mind if I elaborate on the definition of white privilege, at least as I understand it and as most of the academic well, community seems to? I understand to? there are different, yeah, I understand there are different definitions of white privilege, but I'm talking about it in the way that it is popularly used within pop culture, within discussion, within even my own classrooms when I was growing up, but feel free to go ahead. Yeah, so, so this is something I like this segment already. And, and the reason why is because Lauren just a set, made a really ridiculous claim. I'm talking about the way that everybody uses it, everybody blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? The reality is the audience knows that that's not how everyone uses it. Remember, Zoomers know what white privilege means. While her audience might feel the way that she does, but while her audience might feel the way, 
the broader audience knows that people don't talk about white privilege the way that she's talking about white privilege. When at least I talk about white privilege and when most academics talk about white privilege, they're usually referring to um, the remnants or even still existing systems that seem to specifically target the, ma the vast majority of people of color typically, but not white people. So for example, um, you could, here's, here's a good example, right? You can be a poor white person and have it really, really rough, right? And you can have a rich black person who, economically speaking, has it very, very well. There are still certain things that that white person has, very small privileges that white person has over that rich black person. Is it life-changing? Is it uh, a revolutionary for their overall well-being? Probably not, but it is still worth talking about because when we get down to it, these are the types of biases and the types of privileges we probably don't want to exist in society, right? Sure. Yeah, so... <laughs> okay. Yeah, typ typically I'm referring to things like the, like, injustice in the in the racial justice system the racism there um we agree on that right you agree about like the racism in the uh the uh criminal justice system you'd have to point out direct examples i think they're this is a horrible look you 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 tripped on the words but that's that's irrelevant you tripping on words is irrelevant here she made a mistake okay and here's here's the argument so hear me out here why i think lauren looks really bad here can anybody tell me what the biggest piece of news over the last year besides the pandemic has been? Anybody? Anybody know what's in the news right now? George Floyd. Right now, the George Floyd protest happened. Just yesterday, a, a kid got killed by the cops. The day before yesterday... A kid, a a a twenty-year-old black, young black man was killed by the cops. Duante Wright saying, "Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean about uh injustice, racial injustice in the justice system?" Is one of the stupidest things that anyone can say right now. I'm sorry, even even for a conservative, there are the only people right now. Just keep in mind that. Literally, literally, the 700 Club's Pat Roberts, the crazy white supremacist Christian guy, did a segment on the 700 Club, a right-wing Christian show, talking about how bad the Duante Wright killing was. Do you realize how stupid it sounds of her? To say that. So I think this was a good move. I think this was a very good move. And I think she looked very bad here. It is the number one issue that most people care about right now. Besides the pandemic. You know, people would argue that it could go either way in some cases. But you'd have to historically, most likely. Yeah, the army lieutenant incident. Like literally, everyone's pissed off about it. This was a huge mistake on her part and a big and a big a big point up for Zan. There you go. Lauren is not on video. No, we could also talk about once again the racism in college admissions. We could talk about the racism in affirmative action hiring and how people who are more qualified She's equating the murder of black people to slight disadvantages or advantages given to people in colleges this looks like an idiot to anyone who's not completely a nazi already the roles uh, don't get them because of their skin color or because of their gender and you would say that that's an equaling out of things but well, um, i disagree with you there i actually would disagree because i think from my understanding i believe those that benefit most from affirmative action are actually white women like more well-off white women oh, from my I understanding i don't disagree i don't disagree with that and i think it's ridiculous yeah i don't i don't think that affirmative action <laughs> on its own is exactly the best way to go about amending these particular problems when okay. i talk about okay. and I, I agree with you that's what this is saying i don't think that's a good thing i don't think it's a good thing to boost people just because of their skin color or their race because it actually takes away from the achievements of very successful minorities very successful women that have worked hard hey these thank positions. you so and much looks Leah. At them really appreciate did you get that. this thank because you. you were an affirmative action hire or did you get this because you're an incredibly talented individual so I don't think it's been positive for anyone in any way. And even you're saying yourself, you know, actually this has just benefited certain classes and groups and uh, it's not necessarily been positive at correcting the overall problem. Yeah, so when I talk about affirm like a privilege or um, systems that are racist, I'm not necessarily referring to like affirmative action. Yeah, Zan, I, I said that at the beginning. I do think, um, I do think that, uh, that, 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 would, that was a big mistake in my opinion.
you should have had her on video. There's no way you shouldn't you shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Um, I have watched this already, and I am I am giving my takes and watching it together. So, I've thought about this, and I'm rewatching it. I'm referring to things that are a lot easier to pinpoint and there's a lot more data behind and that are way more impactful in most people's lives than just whether or not this person gets hired for this job because they're white or black or this person gets accepted to this university because they're white or black. I'm referring more to like the overrepresentation of incarceration in the in prisons when it comes to black people and white people. Incredibly good move by incredibly good move by Xander Hall here. Really good move by Zan here. The overall um, uh, socioeconomic position of black people in this country, and just generally non-white people uh, as well. Um, I'm talking about issues like this. Obviously, the leftover hey, well, well, ramifications. Can I, can I just quickly tell you something? Sure. I'm not addressing any of that in this book. It's a children's book. I... Whoops! I will. I refuse to address any of that. Oopsies! Good move, Zan. You had her here. No, this I'm is 1.25. Not trying to make any sort of hidden mention of you know. Uh, the incarceration rates, I'm not talking about that at all. This is literally just saying we should treat people equally regardless of their gender or skin color and judge them on the same scale. That's it. There's no hidden message here talking about all of these extensive subjects you've brought up here. And I, even if I wanted to, there couldn't be. It's a children's book. It's an extremely simplified concept. So I really think you're using... Yeah, Zan, I think that if you had hammered home the fact... Again, she uses this, it's just a children's book, book, bro. And I do think, having watched this, you did a decent job, but I think you could have done a great job by pointing out that she made this as a response to another political book. Her book, like it or not, is political. Even if it's still a children's book, it is. And I think you did a pretty good job. This point but that you don't we'll really disagree with to go off on tons of other topics that you maybe want to discuss with me and we can save for later when we're done the book. But this has nothing to do with all these topics you brought up, that equal opportunity bit. Well, I apologize if, if it seems that way, but my, yeah, my main point is that you can't completely separate the beliefs of the author from, from the art. So when I read this, my interpretation was, okay, so... We're talking about equality and how people should strive to surpass and and you know winning a, a, a rigged fight isn't really isn't really something that's worth any merit and, and so I, I couldn't help but think of like because i watched a lot of your content back in the day of when you would talk about like how um the left overblows uh the problems with like the racial or the racial inequalities in the in the criminal yep. justice system it, it just brought me it. back to that it had nothing to do with that it, okay <laughs> there's you, you guys can look it up there's this book called postmodern poo and it's a book which tries to argue in jest that winnie the pooh is actually just rife with post-colonial theory, and it's actually a books about satanic ritual abuse using Piglet and other things, and it's quite a funny book for adults to read. Zan's expression here is every single person, every single person in the audience who doesn't know already know exactly what she's talking about is making this exact face. Just so you know, just so you know, this is the sort of face. Okay, listen, I, I know you guys don't like this, but if this were a Joe Rogan podcast, every person in the audience when Lauren Southern said this thing about Winnie the Pooh, postmodern Pooh, would be making the exact same face as Zan. Normal people out in the world would be like, what the fuck is this person talking about? Wait, what? Hold on. Let me check it. Hold on. All right, hold on. Somebody told me to check my DMs. All right, I'm checking my DMs. Who else is on there? Oh, somebody wants me to go. Oh, Danabo, it's so last minute. Oh, that's so last minute. I don't... I don't think I can do this one. Sorry. Sorry, Danabo. I, I, I want to do this content. I'm sorry. No. Nah. Not today. Trihex and Joe Lewis? That's pog as shit, but I can't today. Sorry. Sorry, Danabo. Not today. Thank you, though. I really appreciate it. I got to get through this content. Let's continue. And it, it mocks the idea of, like, over-reading into this and how you could literally interpret these kids' books. Thanks, Danabo. I really do appreciate it. I just, I just, I got to get through this content today. You can come up with. And I think you're starting to, ver like, just go into that territory a little bit where you are Holy taking this book. Holy shit. 33 gifted tier one subs from Leah. Jesus fucking Christ. Leah, thank you so very, very much for the incredibly, unbelievably generous 33 gifted tier one subs. That means the world to me. Seriously. Thank you so goddamn much for that, Leah. You are a champ. Thank you so much. 
really appreciate that a lot. That's amazing. Um, holy moly. I, I'm going to shrink. Actually, I'm going to just, I'm going to turn off the mute, the, 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 the alerts here just so that we can continue reviewing. But everybody in chat just saw their name go by over on the disc, on the Twitch side. Thank you so very much, Leah. Seriously. Basically, Babylon the Great, basically. And Helena, thank you so much. Holy shit. Thank you so very much. I'm, I'm humbled. Thank you. Big heart. Somehow making a poem about, hey, we should treat all genders and races equally about the disparity in incarceration rates in America. Like you, you just, I can tell you right now, that wasn't even in the peripheral of my mind when I was writing this. And I do think this brings it back to the point I was making, which is, I feel you've worked yourself into a corner where you don't actually disagree with this book. You don't disagree with me on the content. So you are trying. And here she goes again. She's going again, just getting triggered. And Zan is just, what are you talking about? We're just talking about your damn book. And she's like, right, you're trying to get me into a corner. Trying to deliberately create disagreement that isn't there. Okay. Um, yeah, if you didn't have any, like, political, uh, if there were no references or bias politically Thank to this, you so it's just much, like, Leah. hey, we should treat everyone equally, then I have no issue with that. Um, okay, do you want to move on to the, uh, I, I guess it's the next two. Um yeah, it, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put the F is for femi femininity and M is for masculinity one together um, because I feel yeah. like they reference... I, I'm actually... This is going to be a genuine question because yeah, I'm curious okay if your there. opinion yep. on this has changed. Um, so I don't need to read off the whole thing, but uh, you say at the end of the one for femininity, if you want to be a tomboy, that's okay. Some girls aren't feminine. And then at the end of the masculinity one, you say if you're a boy and you don't want to be masculine, that's all right. So I'm curious if... Um, because I was actually really surprised to read that. Are you... Um, have you sort of like become more uh, supportive of like trans and gender non-conforming people in the last, at least since last time I heard you talk about uh, that particular topic? What does this book have to do with trans people? They're not mentioned at all in it. <laughs> well, you specifically said that not all women have. This was really good. And by the way, though there is a mistake in this segment, Zan, I think you did really good here, especially, and, and let me just explain where, where the real good move was, okay? Xander Hall here said the word gender non-conforming, which Zoomers know what that means. Zoomers, who are the majority of the audience that are going to be watching Zan's content. Zoomers know what that means. And Lauren didn't. And so she looks stupid because she starts freaking out about trans people when all that Zan said was gender non-conforming. She sounds like a boomer. to be uh, feminine not all men have to be masculine and i assume i mean gender non-conforming means you don't conform to traditional gender roles that's what that's referencing right you know there are guys who are completely straight that act in feminine ways or there are guys that are completely cis so to speak that aren't entirely masculine and there are women that are completely cis and not transgender individuals that uh act like tomboys i was a tomboy when growing up being a tom are you under the impression that being a tomboy makes you transgender no absolutely not but this is obviously well, then how did you read that this? so are you only referring to cisgendered people that are like straight and just I'm happen to not right really fall i'm not bringing up the subject of transgenderism in a children's book i'm completely against the idea of bringing transgender ideology onto children who are barely even and then she immediately goes into conspiratorial discussions about transgender ideology Okay, she goes like, and Zan knows he's got her here. This sounds insane to anybody who's not familiar with it. That is a buzzword that only sells to far writers. Consider the fact of their own, what is, you know, being a female and a male. I, I don't believe in bringing transgender ideology onto children at all. So wait, no, this has nothing wait, to do with that. Are, are, why are you okay with putting cisgender ideology into that? I mean, yeah! My favorite moment in the entire debate. Well, why are you okay with putting cisgender ideology? Now that, I was cheering in the car for this one, okay? I was cheering in the car for that one. Thank you, Zan, for that one. You get the, the demon mama stamp of approval on that one. That was good. And in the very same passage, you talk about how uh, football and, and, and bravery and whatnot is masculine. And, mothers and, you've, and got him on, you've got her on this. Zan, you have her on this really hard because she can't she can't work wiggle out of that. She did say that football was masculine. And what about girls who like football? This is our feminine. That's what masculine means. 
teaching them words. Femininity and masculinity, well, that's what these words mean. Well, you just said you don't want the, the transgender ideology being taught to them, but this is, I guess you could say the cisgender because ideology. Because transgender ideology is a highly politicized subject that when put on kids can lead them to make all sorts of life-changing decisions, which they are not old enough to make yet, ones which can change their biology, make them infertile, lead to mass amounts of confusion. And quite frankly, in my opinion, I have a lot of love for people who are struggling with gender identity issues. I do. I have friends that are transgender. I have friends that have detransitioned. And it is not something that is fun. It is not fun thinking that you are, or being in the wrong body. Nobody said that. Nobody it. said it's not that, some Lauren. Joyous thing that you just say, yeah, choose that. No, in a lot of ways, we should teach people to be comfortable in their own body and to embrace and love it. And if later on it turns out they are having issues with gender identity, that is not something you try to promote. It is an issue. It is a struggle to be born in the wrong body or have, you know, body dysmorphia. That's not like I don't I don't understand this idea that we should teach people to be happy with choosing to be transgender as if it's some um, choice. I choose to have body dysmorphia. Like it's a really big struggle, which has high suicide rates, high rates of depression, um, you know, even depression after surgery. It's 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 to some degrees, and this is a debate I understand in the left-wing community, whether it's a mental illness or not, and how this debate affects whether insurance claims will fund people's surgeries or not. But there is a debate as to whether this is a mental illness. There is a debate to the psychological impacts this has on people. This book is about basic concepts of life. And female and male, these two genders, are literally how humanity has existed from the dawn of time. You can't reproduce without them both. And the idea of femininity and masculinity are two concepts which have existed for a very long time throughout history and the only reason i'm bringing them up is quite frankly because society has demonized them in a lot of ways and i'm trying to tell kids actually it's okay to be feminine and masculine all right okay we got a lot to go over there because you brought a lot of things up and i do want to acknowledge all of it so firstly i understand that the issue of trans people is very very pub like politicized right there's a huge political debate about yes. it my opinions in this I'm issue it up in a kid. <laughs> okay sure my opinions about transgender people are entirely backed by science, okay? I have done tons of research into this. If you want any of my sources or anything like that, I can provide them to you very happily in an instant, okay? Blue says, okay, I'll say Zan did good here letting her talk because I didn't realize how nonsensical that was. No one, no normie in the entire planet had any clue what she just fucking said. They, to her, to every normie in the world, it just sounds like she has a weird problem with trans people. And... The thing is, normies don't really have uh, uh they have they have concerns with certain parts of trans of trans stuff because they don't understand it usually, but they don't like intrinsically hate trans people. Just like how the no normies don't intrinsically hate gay people either. When somebody sounds way too fucking racist or way too fucking homophobic or way too transphobic, that's a bad look. Yeah, I agree Xander Hall, especially among Zoomers. And she sounded fucking nuts there. I guarantee you, every normie who listens in on this at any point is going to hear that part and go, what the fuck is wrong with this lady? What is she talking about? Um, so first of all, there are no kids that are being brainwashed into being transgender and engaging in some uh, total body-changing, biologically irreversible thing that's happening to them. That's false. That's false. I'm this is it true. right now within my own community in what, Canada. We've can got you give family me an friends that are dealing with this. We've got family friends that are dealing with this in Canada with their daughter who is 14 years old who is currently trying to transition and go on hormones. And they've told her, we love you, we support you, but we just want to wait until you're at an age, 18, you know, the age you're allowed to drink, vote, all of these huge decisions, get tattoos, just wait till then, because this is something that can affect your fertility. This is something that can affect your bone mass. This is something that can really affect your health. I have friends that have detransitioned that still can't afford the surgeries for their detransitioning, and it's totally ruined their mental health. So at least wait until you're at a certain age, they've said. Canadian social services have come in and said, no, we will take your child away if you do not allow them to get this treatment. And this is something that's also just been documented. I've got a video on my channel about it, uh, a more public case in the same province, British Columbia mm -hmm. in Canada, where a man's child is transitioning and going through hormone treatment underage. All right, hold on. States are not now this, just one funny thing. So this second story she refers to here is false. Just so we do a quick fact check, because I know that a lot of people will appreciate that, that is false. The story she is referring to in the second one had nothing to do with the child being trans. It was just chance. This is a dad who, who violated medical privacy laws by going on a talk show and talking about his child's transition on a talk show after being warned to not talk about medical privacy privacy um 
in public. He had already been warned. And neither the mother nor the child actually consented to these things being talked about. Yes, he also he also mentioned the doctor by name, which violated another piece of medical privacy laws. And the doctor sued, too. So she's just lying. I just felt like a little a little fact check there would be fun for people. Allowing him to oppose it. I have a question. If you have a child who has manic depression and the doctors recommend that they get on uh, antidepressants and the parents say, no, I don't want any of this for my kid, at least not until they're old enough. Do you think it would be valid for the government to say, hey, if you're not going to give your kid what they need to deal with their with their mental health, then we're going to have to take them away from you because they're a danger. You're See, being a danger I, to them. I hate when people compare. Ah, ooh, I, ooh, I hate it when people do that. Good move, Zan. This was perfect because it is absolutely comparable and there's no way that she can't. There's no way that she can't acknowledge that. Depression, cancer, all these other things. To trans well, it's absolutely them. comparable as because if, we can no, see with all data. If someone chooses to identify as depressed or de What? <laughs> she literally has nothing on this. K-Prime, thank you so much for the tier three sub. Really appreciate that a lot. Thank you so much, K-Prime from being depressed later well no one chooses no to have gender dysphoria wait, 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 wait. but no 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 but people are detransitioning that's the point very few choose to have gender no that's not very true. few i don't think people choose to have depression or gender dysphoria but no one is detransitioning from having cancer no one is detransitioning from having depression what? the fact of people detransitioning means we have to be very careful and very serious about who we allow to take these treatments and children who quite frankly have very they, they do not have established ideas about who they are and what they want in life yet. I, I think about tattoos I wanted even when I was 17, 18 that I look back at and I'm like, oh my gosh. Or even I think of uh, I, identities I had as a young child. I agree, Thinking God that, King. you know, play, we're, we're a dog. My sister I and I used to dress yeah. up as boys and go to the skate park and have fun pretending right, to be hold, boys then. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on for a second, okay? Hold on, you're, I feel like... I, I feel like we're moving. She was losing it and everyone can see that she's losing it here, okay? off from from just let me finish what i was about to say okay so in the overwhelming amount of data it has been shown that if a trans person is allowed to transition and they have gender dysphoria and they have the support of at least one family member their likelihood of attempting or committing suicide drops significantly it is very similar to depression you also said nobody chooses to detransition from cancer tons of people have regret whenever they go through uh treatment for cancer getting chemotherapy and radiation is miserable hey, a lot of master. people get Good bullied into you. it by their families because their families don't want to see them gone i'd say there's probably a higher amount of people who regret per capita who regret getting uh treatment for cancer because of how terrible the side effects are than there are people who willingly get like hormones to transition or go through any other surgeries they would go through and, and then end up regretting that so clearly we need to take these processes very seriously it is taken seriously. There, there, the thing is, there has not been a wide range of research done on transitioning. There has especially been. amongst under so you're saying there's been a wide range of research amongst underage people getting surgery and transitioning medically when it's just now being brought to the surface. We it's not just now being brought to like the surface. Years. We, so do, you're saying we have research over five, ten years that shows the impact of getting medical treatment as a child. Mm -hmm when they grow up. You're saying yeah. that exists right now this, in a large world. The reason why you- Ooh, She fucked up so hard here and Zan 100% nailed this. Being like, yep, yep, that sells good to everyone. The confidence was, it, when she's like, you're saying that? You're saying? Comes off super good. Just so you know, I know, I know there's a lot of people here who came into here thinking Zan did really bad. This, to normies, is going to come off super good super good and guess what zan i'm gonna give you another point i'm gonna give you another really good point here which is bringing up chemo and radiation is so important first of all everybody's seen breaking bad and second of all almost everyone has a family member who's had cancer you just you just took an issue that most people can't understand being trans and you made it make sense in a non-offensive way to nearly everyone. That is I'm sorry. That is motherfucking based. Right there was a god tier move. And I say this and guess what? Anybody who disagrees with me on this, you can come and talk to me about it. Because guess what? I'm a fucking trans person. I'm a trans person who argues about trans issues every day. This is like, I've studied the shit out of this. And I think Zan did amazingly here. Like, amazingly. So, 
even if Zan fucks up the entire rest of the debate from here on out, which I don't think he does, but even if he did, this moment was amazing. And I mean really good. So there we go. Let's continue. Don't think so it has. Just recently being brought forward. Yeah, I'll elaborate in a moment, but the, I want to say this first. The reason why you don't think it has is because this issue has only become extremely politicized very recently. But nobody is advocating, well, nobody with any actual credibility or any power is actually advocating for giving kids hormones. Now, you probably mix these up. A lot of people do. What's been advocated for and what has been tested and verified to be safe are hormone blockers. The point of hormone blockers is if you have a kid who has gender dysphoria or who thinks they might also, be trans. this is just legitimately educational. Xander Hall is educating people here. And this is good. This is the I, this is the perfect thing. Whenever when you have a platform and you're going up against somebody who's bigger than you, this is exactly what you want to do. Xander Hall nailed it here. People will learn and walk away from this. That's awesome. And he explains it well in a way that normies can understand. You have them visit a designated healthcare professional, usually their pediatrician, who will refer them to a um, to a therapist, and that therapist will figure out whether or not it is very likely they have gender dysphoria. That was a huge issue. Explain why I'm wrong right now, or I'll ban. Here we go. Let's continue. Later in life, for you to transition, if you've gone through, let's say you're a trans woman, you are now in your 20s, and you are now finally able to get hormones and start trans. What? Oh, by the way, what that person meant when they said that they watch Hassan, Mike from PA, and Destiny is that they watch Destiny and they watch when Destiny. Uh, madly replies to both Hassan and and Mike from PA. That's what he meant, by the way. Just just so you know, there's a little bit of the mama magic for you. I I called that the moment the moment he said that. There is no person who simultaneously watches all three of those people. That's just not true. That that does not exist. That that uh fucking demographic doesn't exist. If somebody says they watch all three, that means they watch Destiny responding to those two, and they watch Destiny. I'm just I'm just saying. Just saying because you are fully at fully you know let go of the reins right but you've gone through a male puberty it is a lot harder for you now to go through that process to achieve the body that you want to achieve because you went through the wrong puberty now puberty blockers okay. are safe to give to kids that are you know coming out of prepubescence into puberty and it's been found that there are no negative side effects these same hormone blockers have been used on kids that are not um transgender when they have thyroid issues or other issues that require it's them all good they've been ass, found to be overwhelmingly friends. safe i believe it was found that they are more safe than ear infection medication which we give to also we give kids all the time when they go swimming in the pool and they get pee in their, their ear when they're swimming around Around. um i want to first i want to concede something okay. right now all right you're actually right there has been a decent amount of research done on people post reassignment surgery and uh, i just had someone send it to me actually the most that was fun walk around sex reassigned people research extending over 30 years and conducted in sweden where the culture is strongly supportive of transgender individuals documents their lifelong mental unrest 10 to 15 years after surgical reassignment the suicide rate of those who had undergone sex reassignment surgery rose to 20 times that of comparable peers is this the um is this by ncbi ncbi.nlm.nhi.gov um not that i can see here no can you link it to me yep. this is something i've heard before from other studies but i just wanted to make sure yes so this is Anderson. a critique of zan zan mixes up the study here but guess what lauren couldn't capitalize on it now this will be a, this will hurt you this will hurt zan in the reviews but in the live debate it didn't hurt zan at all and let's be real most people aren't going to watch the reviews they really are not it's only going to be lauren's audience that's going to see that live she failed she failed anyway Va uh, uh, xander hall screwed up but she failed to counter it to me on discord i'm sending it to you on twitter oh, okay remember i'm a boomer i don't know how discord works Yep, I've seen this one. So this, I've actually seen this study plenty, and it's been debunked overwhelmingly. So for starter, uh, for starters, okay, so it doesn't agree with you. So it's been debunked. No, you know what? Do you know who was actually? Do you know who was actually pulled by this? Do you know who was actually pulled in this uh, study? Who was pulled by this? this study pulled parents, not the actual children. And those polls were taken online based on, and they, they like there was no like going to people's homes, visiting parents. It was completely online. People just well, yes, Awarn. All the left streamers that are going to cover her reply. Well. That's true, but lefties don't need to know this information. Lefties know that trans people are valid. With this part, Zan is challenging the right. If he fucks up a fact that only the left is going to notice, it doesn't matter. The left already cares about trans people. It's just, it's a bad look for Zan, but it didn't hurt him in this, in the optics picture.
It was an online survey. It wasn't an actual, uh, like, well-conducted study. Sorry, people. It's it was terrible data the, collection. I'm reading the methods right now. It contains discharge diagnosis up to seven contributory diagnostics. Uh, wait for a minute. Sorry, this is, never mind. So it's got national registers. Yes, Zan mixed up these two studies right here. These two. These two were the ones that were messed up. That's it. It's just just these two that got mixed up. So Zan was correct. That study was debunked. But he just got the reason mixed up. Wait, That's all. Sorry. This is, never mind. So it's got national registers. Yep. That particular study has become a laughing stock among much of the um, scientific community. I've seen it a million times. I'm not going to take your word at it because you were just telling me that. You have a bunch of studies that show people's suicide rates drop. You can go pick those up mm -hmm. while I'm reading the how this was done. Absolutely. And guess what? Zan is correct. Zan is correct about this claim. While he was wrong on a small fact, which only pedants will actually care about, in the broader picture, Zan is correct. go i think this is a good one here we go i'm not seeing anything in here about it being an online study if anything it's suggesting that they were interviewing people and um it was a survey that was taken online and it was that and it was also extremely biased i didn't want to bring this one up because i don't know how much you would agree but the the survey i believe was hosted on a very well-known like anti-trans website as well um and there also was by the way i know people are going to want to critique uh, Xander Hall really hard on this, but guess what? He went up against a propagandist and he out propaganded her. He was he fucked up here and was referencing the wrong study and delivered it so convincingly that even Lauren was 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 frantically googling. Sorry, everybody, that's a win for us. There's no strong verification to determine whether or not the people taking the surveys were um were like real, and it was also meant to survey parents, not the actual trans people i just sent you one of many studies that Sorry, um validate just true. that uh, oh here's a good one here i can send this you know one that, as well you know that right-wing people do this all the time now obviously we prefer to have the correct information but right-wingers do this all the time in fact she did it just before she quoted the study incorrectly she misrepresented the study xander hall counter misrepresented but did it better and more convincingly sorry well, um most notably, strong parental support decreases the likelihood of a suicide attempt within the last, uh, in the past year from 57% to just 4%. That is a massive decrease in the likelihood of suicide for an individual who is transgender who, um, uh, uh, who has family support. The data seems to overwhelmingly suggest that support from a family member now, or a friend... Now, is this studied adults or children? This study... No, it's the right one. Hold on. I was... Someone messaged me. Um, this study specifically... Here, I can actually check right here. Uh, right. Analysis are okay. I am open and, to and hearing. And he is correct in the big picture. He just mixed up two studies. That is a very minor mistake. That's like a spelling mistake versus a factual mistake. All that Zan did was mix up two studies. What Lauren is doing is misrepresenting science. This kind of stuff, but the research yep, study that the kids. I have personally seen. And yeah, the I agree. She, that, she who knows no name. You know, That's true. I've seen over yep. the years as I've gone over this topic. I think Twitter is down, I'm actually. Into right now and researching right now has been highly negative towards the surgeries. If that's changed, if you have proof that it's different, I'm willing to consider that and look at that. But this is certainly not the topic I came on here to talk Retreating about. Retreating again. me down rabbit holes of subjects that are not even contained in this book every single time you bring up a poem. I apologize. Listen, I'm, I'm very, I'm very <laughs> eager. I'm very excited. I'm having this, a good time. I'm this sorry. was good. I think this was good. Zan was able to take. A, a joke on the chin and it made her look petty if I get a little bit uh, a little bit overzealous but I, I I felt like perhaps there was a reference there to uh to trans people because you talk about essentially gender non-conforming people not okay. even a little bit okay it's, cool. not, it's not gender non it's just you know they're if, if you are a guy who isn't necessarily like super masculine maybe you like your craft beers and art instead i don't necessarily i wouldn't dated reference boomer reference nobody talks about hipsters anymore boomer reference 
consider him gender non-conforming. <laughs> that seems that seems a little I mean, bit weird. I mean, that's what it refers to. The idea is that you typically don't conform to most gender roles. Like, have you ever heard of a? I'm curious. Have you ever heard of a femboy? This again is gonna sell well to the Zoomers. This is gonna sell well to the Zoomers. Yeah, true, Devious Chillster. I agree on that one. <laughs> I have heard of your catboy femboys. Yes, I have. Yeah, like um, femboys can be uh, can be cisgender. I understand that, atheist baby, but you have to understand what's actually being discussed here. This is not a scientific debate, atheist baby. This is a rhetorical and propagandistic debate. That's what it is. It is two people with different political worldviews trying to play chess against one another. But doesn't necessarily that doesn't mean they're gay or not uh, not well it doesn't mean they're trans or gay or anything like that they can be totally straight but they just like to be they like to wear the uh, the thigh high socks and you know the uh, the shortcut little uh, uh, shorts and everything and they just dress very feminine. Sure, and I don't like I don't care I don't care. The point of this poem was to say if you want to be feminine you can be feminine if you want to be masculine you can be masculine. There are a lot of aspects of today's culture that I, would you agree kind of reject and demonize Thank you, Ms. traditional Garbage. femininity Very and masculinity. That. Thank you. Um, perhaps, yeah, depending on the space you're in. I've met plenty of people like that. Yeah, so it's like, for example, this is a bit of a random one, but the other day I was on YouTube. And I was watching. God, watching Zan vape makes me want to fucking buy a new vape. My old vape is broken and I haven't vaped in a million years. I miss it. Holy shit. I was on the YouTubes and I was watching this deep dive. Don't worry. I only, I, no, 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 don't worry. I only ever vape with zero zero nicotine vape i just love the se i love the sensation the sensation of vaping is so nice and it tastes really good i don't i don't uh i don't vape with nicotine so it's still not super good for me but not nearly as bad thc vape uh is too strong uh I, thc vapes i used to vape a lot but it's too strong for me i just like nice chill stuff analysis of high school musicals Sharpay and how they she's actually the victim in this book. again talking about high school musicals Sharpay totally dated reference nobody gives a shit about story but it was a time and I remember this when I was growing up the idea of being traditionally feminine was really demonized like you wanted to be a tomboy you wanted to be the girl that dressed a little more plain and was the girl next door because all of the girls in movies that were super feminine were demonized. It was the fact that she wore pink skirts, the fact that she had the little dog with her, she had the long blonde hair, she just loved everything sparkly. And co constantly in the show, they would mock that and make her the villain for having these super, just quite frankly, feminine tropes about her. And what? you know, you can even see this with the bimbo movement on TikTok, where you have girls saying, uh, Oops. Hey, if I want big, big mistake, the bimbo movement on TikTok is leftist and queer as fuck. The bimbo movement is leftist as fuck on TikTok. What are you talking about? Who is she talking to? Who is she trying to talk to? Right-wingers hate the bimbo shit. Who is she talking to here? I want to walk around and be like legally blonde. If I want to be a bit of a bimbo, why Why are you guys rejecting and saying that can't yeah, be Yeah, that was a good idea, why Zan. That was a that really good idea. Wrong or bad. So I, I think that, you know, I was just kind of making a point to touch on, no, if you want to fall into this, that's okay. That's it. It's not a highly politicized point saying you have to be feminine as a woman. It's saying there's been some pushback in our culture against. Yeah, because she's an idiot. She who knows the name. Kids. Yes, correct. It's okay to be these things. That's fine. And I, once again, I don't think you disagree with that. So you tried to make this a debate about transgenderism, Agreed. a topic which I will admit I am not particularly well versed in. I'm not going to pretend I know all the studies. I don't. Yes, on surface. It's not something I think is good to put on kids. Maybe. Lauren looks bad here because remember, she went in super hot into the trans topic. And now she's like, well, I don't actually know anything about it. And everybody's going to remember that. It was less than 10 minutes ago. I'm wrong about that, but that's not what I came on here to debate you about. And that's not a point I was making in this book. You're very, you got a very neat trick of making every single poem in here and every single topic in here about a topic you want to debate. And now she's getting triggered again, even though Zan has been very, very calm me on that I'm not talking about. Do, but don't you think that if a if if I wrote a book that was very similar to this and I wrote it's okay uh, for you to identify however you like you don't have to be masculine you don't have to be feminine knowing my takes on um on these issues would you not think that perhaps I was alluding to it being okay to be transgender even if you're a kid? If that's all you were saying, I wouldn't care. That it's okay to be to be trans care. as a kid. If you were writing it, 
saying it's okay to be trans as a kid. That would be a highly politicized point the same way. And she looks bad here too because Zan correctly set the frame. He asked her, why would you care if I wrote about that? And she says, no, it would be super highly political politicized. She contradicts herself. That if I were writing, you know, you have to be feminine. We know these are politicized arguments. There are no, there's almost no one in the right wing sphere or conservative sphere of politics that are saying kids should be transgender and should be taught transgender politics. And there's almost no one in the left wing, uh, more progressive realm of politics that is saying all she men have to be trans masculine. Well, no, no, she did. So did, but I'm not saying yeah, either we'll politicized side of things. Okay. Um, do you want to move on to G? This one's a bit faster. Yeah. I'm just that was a very what good move. This. So G is that for was a really, easy. That was a very good time to move off of the topic. That was a very good time to move off of the topic, in my opinion. To accept what those in crowds believe. But if they're wrong, it means more people who will grieve. History has told us that folks are often led to throwing out their reason and trusting mobs instead. Exactly. Groupthink is a nasty and quite well hidden trap. Yep. When you first step in it, you might not feel it snap. It's not that it's wrong to trust in other people, but think for yourself so you don't follow them to evil. So... What, what did you mean by I that? I really like to think you don't have a problem with that. No, <laughs> I really I, like to think. I, I, don't, I don't necessarily. I'm just curious what your thoughts are on it. Um, you know, if a group of people tell you to jump, jump off a bridge, don't just jump off a bridge because a group's telling you to do that. If there's a bunch of people on a political bandwagon, whether it be political or social, don't just do something because lots of people are doing it. Think for yourself. Maybe they're all doing it for good reasons, but sometimes crowds do things for bad reasons. Okay. It's that simple. Would it be presumptuous of me to, or perhaps... Uh, uh, overbearing of me to ask if you have any examples of like a political bandwagon that you've seen people jump on? Um, I mean, any sort of totalitarian bandwagon in history, Nazism, communism, you know, I'd even suggest the mega movement. Don't join a mega, mega movement just because mega it looks movement. exciting and lots of your friends are wearing red hats. Think about it. Think about whether you support the policies. Think about what, um, what you really believe deep down. Black Lives Matter. Don't go protest with them unless you understand why you're doing it, unless you understand the cause behind it. Notice what she had to do here. Listen how she had to play super nice there. She's like, don't go and protest with BLM in unless you know what you're doing. That's not going to play well to either Zoomers, who are very invested in BLM, or right-wingers, who hate BLM. She failed to straddle the difference. Maybe the, at the end the of the day, you she, decide you do sorry. want to join that. She failed to straddle the gap. Jade Monkey, thank you very, very much for the two gifted tier one subs. Really appreciate that. Thank you. She said mega. Yeah, mega movement. Maybe at the end of the day, you think it is for a good reason, but don't just do it because all your friends are going there or because it seems like everyone's doing it on Twitter and Instagram and celebrities have told you it's good. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with that. I feel like a lot of people, especially nowadays, tend to perhaps stop thinking as much and maybe join into a uh, a group that they feel comfortable in and sort of uh, they're looking for some kind of belonging in a group and that's what pushes them into wherever they end up going whether it be left or right there are a lot of people like that so i do i do you know i had friends that were posting the black square thing and i just because I, I saw it i knew they weren't particularly involved in politics and i knew they they likely didn't know much by the way real quick moment for those of you who are here now and haven't liked the stream please hit the like button would love it would absolutely love for you to hit the like on the stream and if you're not a sub subscribe to me we'd love to like that youtube stream thank you let's continue about it and i just messaged them and be like hey so what's what's the black square for and they could not give me they were like oh i i support um i support this black lives matter movement and i'm like oh, okay cool what does it stand for and they just could not give me a succinct answer you know, they didn't bring up police violence they didn't bring up they just said oh it means you you're, you're not a racist it means and I'm like, no, there's so much more to these to these movements and this symbolism that you have to understand. And I don't mind if you post it and you have a deeper thing to it. Like, hey, I'm posting this square and also I'm going to my local community and I'm going to start talking about how we can bring in police reform, how we can bring in, uh, you know, at stop, I'm going to stop the violence rally against gang crime to try to make this a more peaceful city. I'm actually doing something that affects change, but I see so many people just posting it's like when people put the plague filter on their face. Plague. And it's really irritating when people don't know what they're supporting and there's no real Sorry. action behind it. So Once Canadian. Again, I'd like to think you'd agree with that. No, I actually don't necessarily disagree with that. I think um, something that I find interesting is I feel like perhaps there's a difference between like 
people on Twitter adding like the little thing to their to their name because they just want to lend some support or at the very least uh, virtue signal support and um, mm-hmm. someone joining like a movement and participating in that movement because they want to feel like they belong or because their friends are doing yeah. it because they see a lot of people doing it. And I guess at the end of the day, I'm a consequentialist. I prefer when people have the right reasons to do what they're doing. But if it results in good outcomes, it's typically not something I'm going to get as upset about or um, try to drum up a fuss about unless I'm seeing something bad happen because of it. I, I encourage people to think for themselves. But if people don't think for themselves and they engage in a movement that's overall causing good to happen in the world, I don't really see it as, um, as like a huge problem. But don't get me wrong. I think encouraging you know, uh, yeah. uh, self, self-reliance and thinking about what you're doing for the right reasons is important. I, I see what you mean. I've become, in the last few years, largely anti-movement and cause in general. That's going to sound weird initially saying it, but I've found over the years, like even in kind of right-wing circles, people would get into these movements and they'd, when they'd try to justify their behavior, the things they were fighting for, the arguments they were having online, they'd say, this is bad for the movement. This is for the cause. And I'd ask them what the cause was and they'd be like, well, the, you know, the cause is progressivism, but the cause is Trump. And it seemed that the cause of the movement had become the cause. It was kind of a self-creating, there was no real people behind it, right? To me, if the cause doesn't actually come down to affecting and helping real people and you're just doing it, I'm doing this for Black Lives Matter. Yeah, I agree. So you're acting for the cause. You're not actually doing it for someone's life. I'm doing this for the mega movement. There has yeah, to be did. real people, did, real Zan. community, I real agree. family that you are fighting for change. Whether it be I have someone in my community that is deeply affected by gang crime and so I've joined some sort of movement to fight against gang crime because my community and people I care about are impacted. Whereas I think a lot of people join movements and causes not because they are connected to their family and community, but rather the opposite. They are disconnected from their family and community and they have True, some, really potato. this much deeper Lauren desire for so just a narcissistic earn. purpose in life. They need something to motivate them and they need something to, to drive them and to justify them being in politics. So they just, it's all for the cause. The cause, guys, we gotta fight for the cause. And they have nothing so, actually tying them to why they're fighting for change, so, which I worry about and I think is unhealthy. What do you think would be the biggest difference between you and I and your average person who goes to a Black Lives Matter march or puts the little um, the flag or the block in their uh, Twitter name? What would, you, what would you, just off the top of your head, guess would be the biggest difference between you and me and them? I'd have to know them on an individual level. I'd have to know their motivations for doing that. Well, well cop if there's out. someone who's doing cop it just because out. they saw a lot of other people do she it, I would out. say the difference is, is I have she really out. delved into the subjects that I care about to the point of you know flying over to Europe to go investigate the migrant crisis from the other side with the traffickers and seeing it firsthand also and i will say when i was initially involved in politics i think i had a bit of this problem where it was just for the cause and i hadn't built a lot of community and real things that i cared about which i've changed now and part of the reason i'm in politics is because i really care about my family i care about my community and i care about their future and that's where most of my life is focused and i worry about two groups of people one group where they don't actually have anything real outside of this political world and the reason they are involved in causes this is normal is space i mean this is 1.25 they, they enjoy the drama online they enjoy the drama it it makes them feel justified when in attacking the cause other is people sus. and the people who are just doing it blindly because they're scared of being socially rejected for not supporting these movements i don't think anyone's going to get socially rejected for saying nothing about it unless they're actively standing really? against it because it happened to chris pratt he said he didn't want to go to a biden rally and they tried to cancel him online. yeah he didn't say he nothing about it he said for doing nothing. yeah he said he didn't want to go there also chris pratt had been canceled for some certainly more valid things before that however no, but you just said people aren't being canceled no, I don't for think not so. doing anything. When I have friends that are Instagram influencers, totally non-political, that said... I disagree, hundreds- Boltier. I disagree, Boltier. Remember, remember, Lauren Southern's main thing is the is the migrant thing. You don't want Lauren Southern to talk about her main thing. That's her main thing. That's like her expertise, quote-unquote. You don't want her to talk about that. It's better if she just brushes over it messages from people saying how dare you haven't posted you haven't posted a black square you haven't posted anything about the rallies in the states how dare you it's the idea that no one is getting canceled for just standing back and saying nothing is just untrue it's untrue when i maybe it's because i'm like a political creator and when i think about getting canceled i think of much more virulent hardcore things and like getting a few mean messages this was a good move as well this right here is snarky without sounding condescending. I mean, like, maybe it's because I'm a political content creator, but when I think of canceling, I think of something more severe. That is a good move. It makes her complaints sound like the frivolous ones when she's been spending the entire time desperately trying to frame you as the frivolous one. Hers are the frivolous ones, and you showed that without sounding like you were saying that. When I get canceled for anything, it is way worse than, than like what, what those people probably went through. And I'm a comparatively now, much smaller figure. Yeah. Now here's a critique. Talking about your own cancellation, 
kind of ruins the effect there. It's really good to talk about the severest, the severity of cancellation, but talking about your own cancellation is a little bit, a little bit egotistical, and also sounds a little bit, you know, it doesn't quite seal it. That's all I'm gonna say. The motto of Black Lives Matter is literally, in some cases. Uh, silence is violence. So either you support us or you are a violent individual. You are not allowed to not agree with so, us or you are a violent silence, individual. So the, silence then? is violence means that if it comes to it, if you are not willing to step up when the only option is support this movement or don't, when that is the only option at the head of it, when an election comes around or whatever, um, that if you are willing to do nothing, then you are essentially allowing the status quo to continue. And the status quo is bad. Okay. Explaining this so was good. Is, people will get in trouble and will be that's not, for not participating in these political That's movements. not... Again, uh, explaining what that means is educational. Normies who watch this will hear her reference something that they don't understand, and then will hear Xander Hall explain what that actually is. Do you understand why that's a good thing? Normies who watch this, which is who we're supposed... Which who we're, we're supposed... You know, the goal of this conversation is to reach... Not the people in I necessarily sworn into their audience. She says some random off the cuff reference and he explains what it actually means to those people. Xander Hall is teaching people while she's just making weird references. That is very good. Not referring to just making your screen like posting a little black screen on your on your Instagram. I didn't get in trouble for, for not doing that. I, I don't think I posted like little That's because you you talk about this in all other realms, right? Um, actually, no, I get like tons of shit from people that, that are like very progressive. I get canceled by the left constantly. And I did not get a single uh, a hateful message message whenever I didn't post like a black screen on my Instagram or Twitter. Not a single message. Okay, well, I know people who did. And ultimately- Again, well, I know people who did. Sounds very petty, very, very frivolous and personal. This G is for group think fit. I, I know you just said you don't really mind that much if people uh, as long as they're doing good things, even if they don't understand why they're doing good things, it doesn't matter that much. The problem is when people don't think about why they're doing good things, they can easily be turned to bad things. And if people's understanding of the politics they're supporting is fickle agree, and not Nico. very and very thin, they that makes long term success of whatever your political ideology is extremely hard. And it also makes them easy to just turn to the next group, whatever it may be whenever that's popular. So mm -hmm. I really think you should care a lot more about people who are just doing good things without thinking about it, because that those those are the people that are ultimately usually utilized by dictators and tyrants. True. If you look at my if you look at my uh, that's uh, what most I, recent YouTube videos, a eat babies. I'm trying to do that myself, but I have some limitations. But I I am trying to do that myself. Reach normies, zoomers, and and be unapologetically left while still making things make sense to them. That is why I spend so much time explaining concepts and my videos run a little bit longer. A amount of them are me going after people also on the left who do that same kind of thing. I, I criticize this plenty. People looking for a group and they join into, say, like leftism, like what I am a leftist, and they, they do it because they want community, right? And I, and I criticize that name? plenty. But I think, because you brought up a few anecdotes of people that... Um, what do you mean by that name? What do you mean by that name? Do you mean Demon Mama? I don't know if you all know this, but... Fucking Lil Nas X just made a gay demonic song that just killed the charts. Demons are in style right now. Demon Mama is not going to hurt me with normies. Oh, you meant the baby name. Oh, okay. Never mind. Didn't, like, they put the little black block in their thing, or they had the flag, or they said BLM, but when you asked them, they didn't know what the issues were. I think one of the biggest differences between us and them that you have to remember is that you and I are media-trained public figures that make our livings off of advocating for the issues that we care about. A lot of these people are just your average Joes. I they know he maybe to. have a following on Twitter, but they aren't these political figures or political activists that dedicate their lives to learning about and advocating Correct. for these issues. We're on Correct. the same one. which is why it is such a problem that we have created a society that forces everyone to have a political position on every single topic. We want every, like, celebrities have to be an advocate for every single political issue, every single election, even though, once again, they're not experts in it. The average person has to speak up and has to be an advocate for all of these different issues. Thank you, Mr. Loglord. They never have the time to properly investigate, and that is a lot of pressure. And this is something that is put on us from a very, very young age. You have kids that are doing climate marches that have no idea what any of the data, any of the information on this is about, and they're just doing it because they've been told that it's their job to save the world. No, it's their job to be learning, you know, basic life skills in school, <gasps> and they, they, they're 
aren't being used as political pawns in so many cases. And this is ultimately the problem I'm pointing out in my book is all <gasps> these people that are- Something happened. It, they want to look oh good. no. Oh. Wait, I uploaded, I, I uploaded Palm Poker to the site and it didn't actually save. Why is Palm Poker not on the site? <gasps> I wanted Palm Poker. Oh, that's so frustrating. Okay, I'll, I'll fix it for next stream. I must not have saved it. Oh no. Oh well, let's continue. Or legitimately being used as pawns uh, by political manipulators. Okay. When we don't have the time to understand every topic fully, quite frankly. Some All people right. can be advocates for topics that they understand very deeply and not be political advocates, of course, so, but we're being asked a lot of as humans these sure. days. So much. I think that political disaffection is one of the biggest problems that we could possibly have in our in our world. I think being politically aware of what's going on and having a side that you support, ideally the side that makes the world better, is extremely important. I don't care what age you are, you should have a fair understanding of what's going on in the world and understand how to make the world better and probably have a desire to make the world better. Obviously- Okay, another quick point in Zan's favor here. Zan strongly and, un and unapologetically it, it takes the position that political knowledge is good. Remember, the context of all of this is that Xander Hall is talking about Lauren Southern's political children's book, and she's trying to make the argument that a, that her political children's book isn't political. Do you think? Do you think normies are going to come into this and not notice that? Like, don't you think it's going to be really weird when she says, I needed to make this political children's book to explain my politics, and then simultaneously says, kids are too political? Climate change—that's an issue that concerns everybody. She so having kids up. engaging in those marches, they're learning about up, climate change did. in school. This is an important issue. You, you learn about how the climate works in school. This isn't like even comparable to an issue like the the trans thing, right? It's going to be is on the site, distinct Sadis John. Thing you for some reason, in el elementary school, you learn about climate and climate okay. change. Well, let, this is something like, that you I don't, should I care disagree about. Disagree with you. I think the problem isn't that not enough people want to change the world. It's that not enough people want to change their communities. Everyone wants to look good by saying they're going to change what the world. What does that Everyone mean? Everyone wants to look good by holding a sign and saying end violence, but that doesn't actually do anything. Going in and helping your communities, building up your communities volunteering that kind of stuff changes things but it doesn't look good you can't make it uh you know you can't hashtag it and get tons and tons of likes sure, hashtag tweets, quite frankly. It. so everyone is trying to change the world change the world with not actually doing anything but no one actually wants to focus yep, so on their community the, and real things the because reason that's not Popular. Yeah, sure. So, so, so the reason the reason why you can't think of a lot of examples of people doing community efforts to make the, like their community better is because those things don't get a lot of traction. But I myself focus a lot on on community organizing. I want to do um, a canvassing for candidates that I support in back in Florida eventually when I have enough money for it um, when the midterms come around. These things don't make headlines. You probably wouldn't end up seeing it all that much. But if you've looked into it, I've, I've definitely looked into it. Every single city, every uh, uh, local area that I can think of has like a local DSA chapter. They have clubs at universities and colleges that work together to try to. Small critique here, Zan. Ready? Small critique. You got to divorce yourself from the destiny mindset. You can do way better. You can do way better than just canvassing. You can do way better than that. Canvassing is a summer job for college students. That's a good thing. It's great. It's a really good thing if that's what you can do. But I don't know if you know this. But things didn't exactly turn out too great for the last big streamer who tried to do this. Zan, you are a controversial, you are a controversial figure, which means you need to not do things that require you to engage directly with the Democratic Party. What you can do, though, you can run fundraisers, food drives, you can set up a charity. Those are the things that you could do that are real. You could lead a local mutual aid thing that you help promo via your stream that's the stuff that you should be thinking about not canvassing the D the D democratic party has an entire apparatus to get more canvassers you have the unique ability as a streamer who isn't a part of the of the democratic party to go out and make actual change in communities you could fund someday or you could motivate using your platform a community garden in your city a series of community gardens in your city, a library of awesome uh, leftist media that's perfectly free uh, in your area. That's the stuff I want to see people like you thinking about. You hear? You hear that, Zan? Get your mind out of the the, the, the destiny, destiny sphere. No offense, but I said I was going to critique. I'm serious. 
You got to think differently. You aren't a you aren't a Democratic Party member. You're a, an edgy streamer who does debates, who argues with people. You go and you start a you start the 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 Xander Hall like like fucking trans uh trans group. Go to your city and want to know something to be super based that I think that um tr that content creators can actually do. You could start a local uh org a a local trans healthcare org you just give them some starting money you boost them online and get people interested and then it will self-perpetuate i'm serious want to know an example of that here in seattle there is an organization called gay city gay city has been around for like a hundred years it was started by some random gay people like a hundred fucking years ago and all that they do is here's what they do they have a group of people that hang out in a building that's owned by the charity and those people answer phone calls for gay people who need help finding doctors, counselors, and resources. They help people fill out. Um, they have people on hand who can help you fill out EBT applications. Uh, they give out. They they every month they buy some bus cards and they give those out for free to gay people in need. That can change a life. Want to know why? My life was changed by Gay City. Gay City has nothing to do with the Democratic Party. It's just a local charity that actually helps people. When I first arrived here, I found the therapist that I've been with for three years who has genuinely saved my life through Gay City. And what, what they do is they just serve as a nexus. And as they've grown over time, they have bought space. So because they're a standalone charity, they bought conference space so that gay people in town who are like hey i want to host a meeting on thursdays for local queer youth gay city would you be willing to let me use your space gay city can go yep come on in use our office space that our charity owns and you guys can host your little queer talk together that's the kind of stuff i want streamers to start thinking about that's a big critique but i just wanted to bring that up to lobby their local governments for uh, certain policies like climate related or with do they have a issues. website yes they do just look up gay city seattle there is plenty of com well, community act activism that. that happens but you can't ignore the, the worldwide let's scale focus on, okay for sure let's focus on everything else because absolutely just... arson yep i've talked about that in the past uh arson says i'm trying to get better at this arson says do you think there can be agit prop canvassing that happens like lefty pamphlets of or pamphlets of lefty ideas yes last year at the beginning of the pandemic a, a bunch of people from the Seattle Mutual Aid um, Anarchist Free Association Free Food Group, which has given out hundreds of thousands of dollars of food throughout the pandemic successfully, they drove around in a in a truck stuck that had a bunch of Bernie stickers all over it, and they gave away little baggies of hand sanitizer, masks, soap, stuff like that that had... Uh, that had voter registration information, Bernie information, and an inf on information on how to connect with the mutual aid group. Super successful. Absolutely doable, and that cost nothing. It just took six people to sit down and do it. Just saying. Just saying. I suggested that things aren't actually, people aren't political enough. They are too disaffected. Once again, I really, really disagree with that. We are at the point where we have literally politicized pillows. Pillows. We have got, you, you have uh, the my pillow guy versus that that kid from Parkland. I can't remember his name. He was going to make his own yeah, David good Hogg. pillow. Yeah. David Hogg. We politicized pillows. If you don't I, think we have got so much politics coming from every realm, every you can't even eat cereal. Why is my ice cream yelling at me about Black Lives Matter? I just want to buy a damn taco without being told about how I'm ruining the environment or affecting the world. Like corporations have literally become. Sorry, uh, Urban Heel. Urban Heat says that's empty politics, though. What are you re What are you referring to when you say that? What do you? What What can I? Can you clarify? Does Hold on. It, They've embraced this because they know they can hey, sales out of it Good in to see every you. single aspect do, of our lives. Like, no, do we you, need to actually live. We need to have a little bit of real-world perspective as well. Do you think perhaps there's a 
there is a something to notice when you see that what you're getting upset about right now are messages on packaging for food and Twitter battles between the uh, surviving victim of a school shooting Good and the call. MyPillow guy. And then when you have you have BLM activists out there trying to advocate for justice or reform of the justice system and systemic top-down changes to help improve the socioeconomic position of black people in this country. It doesn't Good seem call, like there's Zan. maybe a disparity Good between what, what you're upset about here and how you feel political disaffectedness doesn't harm the world and what people that are politically involved, mostly on the left, are, are talking about, the issues that they're concerned about? Oh, I've seen, you know, I've seen the memes where it shows, um, hey guys, we've changed the voice actor on The Simpsons to be to be representative of black people. And, you know, like the Black Lives Matter Wojak, like all we wanted was systemic change. Like we don't want some another oh, oh, yes, rich yes. Hollywood guy yeah, being I hired agree. or another corporate platitude. We're getting tired of this. And I agree with that. Do you know how bad it sounds to say I've seen memes? That's a bad look. That's these issues are ridiculous, and it's crazy Thanks, that people Urban are Thanks talking for the about them so much, and I'm probably a bit of pro part of the problem there because I see it, and I get frustrated and add to the conversation. And there are people on a community level that are trying to make change that are getting I disagree, my Bluebird. So far, this has been very good. And so much useless stuff. So We've far, I would go so far as to say this has been really good. Like, super good. Like, amazing. But we're talking about the problem with kids' books that are completely harmless and politicizing and having debates over that, which you don't even disagree with, um, instead of talking about real issues. Because we just need content. Everyone needs content, don't they? This comes off really stupid right now. Zan is saying how important it is that people get involved, and she's trying to downplay real... She's trying to downplay things like climate change you don't get any more real than climate change what 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 uh sure so that i don't know what that has to do with what i just said the argument that i was making is i think that being disaffected from Ooh. politics is harmful and that everyone should care about making the world better making their community better as well and when you brought up ways in which people are too involved in politics what you brought up was pack like political messages on food packaging and twitter fights between uh public figures and not real issues that are going on it seems like what, what why we were genuinely reasonable seeming people saying this was a bad performance we'll get there you say affecting you right now is like a huge systemic issue that's like really affecting your life very badly the lockdown of countries and not being able to see my family Okay, that's something that people should care about. Coronavirus. We want to get past this coronavirus shit as soon as possible. We want to distribute This was also super good. And let me explain why this was super good. Zan points out, wow, yes. So Zan agrees with Lauren Southern and turns it into being about how we should defeat coronavirus, which comes off as, as actually caring about the issue. Zan didn't condescend and go, oh, yeah, but I bet you think this. Instead, Zan said, wait a second, I do care about that. That's why we got to get through the pandemic. It comes across as genuinely caring. Vaccines. Is this not a political okay. issue that people should be caring about? Because that's something that affects your life directly. I want to I quickly, quickly go back to your point. My point is that people are not disaffected they are involved in politics but they are being brought into it and involved in the wrong ways rather than on a community level rather than where they can actually make change they are being distracted by all of these ridiculous platitudes which i think ultimately we agree we've just been talking past each other so i'm saying people are not disaffected from politics they are being used and abused by politicians and corporations to talk about issues that make them popular and they're following groupthink to talk about useless issues instead of thinking for themselves and going and create going and involving themselves in politics that are actually really helpful on a community level so once again i think we agree there we're just talking past each other i i'm i'm, ex I'm absorbing everything that you're saying here okay i'm internalizing it i promise i guess what i'm trying to say is i feel good call there good call there say like hearing her out but saying no i get what you're saying i don't think we're talking past each other is a good move but admittedly this is she's making this awkward like I, at least here in america because i'm most aware of american politics i know you've traveled the world quite a bit you're from canada you're currently in australia um for me here in america i'm pretty sure most people or at least a significant amount of people don't even vote that's a big issue to me. That is political disaffection at work. And to make it even worse, there are people who are going to decide who they vote for in 2024 or in the midterms based on Dr. Seuss getting canceled or because the My Pillow guy is far right. These are going to be issues that people decide to vote on because it's the culture war. I'm sure you've heard of you it. It's the culture Listen, war. No, no, no. Cancel culture is a problem for everyone because people are literally. And, and, and she interrupts him and starts getting mad again. 
afraid of losing their jobs, losing their friendships, losing their reputation. And that's political. Against culture. And this, this is not a right wing issue either. I just saw this. And that's it. political. Oh, I love it. Dallas published a big, huge critique of cancel culture that yep. was really phenomenally done from the left. This is not, cancel culture is an issue that is affecting Wait, people. Wait, I agree, Windleby. I agree that she gish galloped a lot, but guess what? No one will remember it because Zan brought attention to the stuff that mattered and let her gish gallop about meaningless things that don't have any context out how to, outside of her already core fan base. I'll explain this at the very end. On every level. I, I feel like it's not is to ignore working class people that don't get in the media. But I do, I do agree. There was a lot of gish galloping. A meme they thought was funny that your pivoting worker decided was sexist. This is you're Run. ignoring. To, cancel culture is a serious. Yeah, issue. You're, you're pivoting. Is what, I, is what my point. Is. You pivoted into an argument that I feel like supports mine. If cancel culture is so dangerous and it, and it can harm everybody, people can lose their jobs because they tweet out a joke. Is that something that we shouldn't be politically disaffected about? That people should be like, okay, maybe we should perhaps look at issues like this a little bit more nuanced and maybe not engage in dogpiling? Because when you when you advocate and say that political disaffection is good, then you're essentially advocating for the uh, um, the enable the enabling of cancel culture cancel culture has come as a result of the politicizing of everything we're going to make pillows political we're going to make ice cream political we're going to make you know every tv show we watch we have to analyze on a political level and decide whether it's okay or not i hate that and that is also part of what has led to cancel culture and people who don't want any involvement in politics being dragged into it and analyzed on a dragged. scale of progressive ideology that in some cases they don't even understand understand and, cancel, you know, cancel culture has been around for a lot longer than even the internet has, but cancel culture, true. as we see it today, especially nowadays in recent years, seems to be propagated mostly by the fact that everybody is inside, everybody's on the internet, nobody yeah. is able to go out and, and do things in the real world, so everything that happens on the internet feels like it's going to be the end of the world. Trust me, as a victim of cancel culture, I see the kind of people that go out- This, also, very good. Doesn't sound condescending, sounds very caring. Hey, everybody's trapped inside right now. That is, by the way, just let me just explain something here as to why I've come to this conclusion, because I know some people are going to be like, oh, but Demon Mama. Think about it. For the last, for a lot of Zoomers out there, for a lot of people who are probably going to be watching this debate, the people who are going to be uh, uh, attracted to this type of content, their experience, they're young. The last year of their life has been spent online. So Zan saying, I know that right now it feels like everything that happens online is the end of the world. But don't worry. It's going to be okay. You can engage with politics. That is good. That is a good point. That sells to people whose experience is being trapped for the last year away from their friends. And remember, that is when you're young, shit that's happening right now is all that you think about. When you were young, if you lived through a pandemic, well, some of you are young, but I know for me, if I went through a pandemic when I was 16, that's all that I would be thinking about. So Zan comes across as very compassionate here and also encouraging while not accepting her, percent, her, her prescriptions. That's good me and try to cancel me terminally online okay i would say yes, the popularity online, of, i agree i would say the popularity of the internet is what pro propagates cancel culture the most people on the right do cancel culture people on the left do a shit ton of cancel culture most of those doing cancel culture are 14 year olds with pit crew avatars on twitter now i agree i feel like um, there's a nuanced conversation very that, much like what i don't think that was necessary but i get you i get you but that's gonna that kind of counters it a little bit because those people with pit crew avatars a lot of those are your fans zan but i get it I, I, I feel like that joke was a little a little bit countered the effect, but but yeah. The reference Lindsay Ellis had before that can be had about cancel culture. Political disaffection is one of those things that prevents people from having that conversation because then it becomes two sided. You don't get if you can move those politically disaffected people to a nuanced take on something like cancel. They said, I heard a really interesting analogy that streamers and other media figures focusing on issues are like targeted airstrikes where local air organizers are like soldiers on the ground. Yep culture instead of it being cancel culture is good take accountability for that joke that you tweeted back in 2009 that you need to be destroyed for you need to lose your job and cancel culture is the end of the world everyone is going to die we need to stop it you, your life could be ruined any second because of this or this and it's never it's never okay it's going to become a two-way battle no uh, uh middle of the line that takes a look at it in a nuanced way because of all the political disaffection okay i, I i'll agree with you there once i don't i disagree to the level of I think there are some people who are certainly politically disaffected, but I also worry about the over-politicization of everything and everyone. But I think what we're disagreeing here 
is what people are being politicized over and caring about being the wrong topics and the wrong conversations and some people being left out of those conversations altogether. Um, what does any of that mean? Does anybody know what any of that meant? Anybody? What does she say? We're talking about, she's saying, wait, well, wait a minute. Well, actually, it's not about politics, actually, even though I've been saying it's about over-politicization. It's actually about being politicized in the wrong ways. Gibberish. Absolutely gibberish. Listen, listen back. I'm not making this up. This is gibberish. Here is what people are being politicized over and Here caring we go. about listen. being the wrong topics and the wrong but I also worry about the over politicization of everything and everyone. But I think what we're disagreeing here is what people are being politicized over and caring about being the wrong topics and the wrong conversations and some people being left out of those conversations altogether. Um, I think a big part of this, and this is what conservatives have been bringing up for a long time, is we can't really have that nuanced conversation about how we feel about cancel culture and ways to solve it. We can't have these nuanced conversations about politics when, when this cancel culture exists. So it's a self-perpetuating problem. Because people are too scared of losing their jobs. People are too scared of, you know, ruining their lives over talking about politics. I have friends that have completely left the realm of politics altogether. They are never planning on partaking in it ever again because they got some crazy docs put up of them online, because they got canceled in some sort of political sphere, because they got in trouble with their employer for posting their political thoughts online, like a Gina Carano has gotten fired for posting her thoughts. As much as I think her take, you know, comparing, I always think comparables to the Holocaust tend to be a little, a little exaggeratory. By the way, this again looks very bad for Lauren Southern. Put yourself in the shoes of somebody who doesn't know anything. And you go, well, you know, Gina Carano got fired. But I mean, I mean, you know, I, I don't really like jokes about the Holocaust. Uh-oh. What do you think that random people who have no fucking clue what actually happened, normies who don't know anything about Gina Carano being fired, they might have heard her name and then they hear Holocaust joke. Do you realize what this will look like to anybody who's not terminally online? That will look bad for Lauren Southern. That does not look good for Lauren Southern. That looks bad, very bad. And silly and cringe sometimes, but you know, lots of people make that take left wing and right wing, and that's her thoughts on the issue. And instead of immediately saying she's a bigot, let's have that conversation. No, she gets fired from her job. So, if you're worried about political disaffection, making sure no one's allowed to talk about issues without being afraid of losing their job or being dogpiled by tons of well, radical communities is not a great way to do that. So, we have to deal with the radical communities, we have to deal with the cancel culture, and we have to deal with the people who are constantly slandering anyone who tries to involve in politics and have nuanced conversations. Yes, she's failing. As well. Yes, and she's desperately failing. Failing, Exia Ross. She's desperately failing. Because here's the thing. And, and I'll explain, actually. You know what? I'm going to save your comments so that I can comment on it at the end. And I'm going to explain what I think is going on. I, I do agree with you, by the way. I do agree that she's failing. Yes. Or I, I would say yes, I should say. I don't... Whatever. It was a question. You know what I mean. And I have dealt with from yourself. Yeah, so... I think there's an elephant petty, again, petty. in the room that's also a pretty large propagator of this that I didn't necessarily later, want to get into because it's fairly, it's fairly complicated. But obviously, capitalism is a big cause of this as well. Big corporations like Disney, if there's a lot of hubbub happening about someone like Gina Carano, Gina Carano is not going to sit down and debate me on stream. I highly doubt it. I added her on Twitter, and she didn't respond. Uh, I would love to sit down and have a debate like what we're having now over the issues that Gina Carano was tweeting about. I think a lot of Sleep it is well, capitalism. Kubi. These corporations Catch are going to fire an actress that tweets about this thing that gets people upset. Um, these companies, and they recognize that it's popular to be more progressive in this area, are going to advertise that progressivism in their products, their movies, their food, everything like that, packaging. Um, <laughs> and obviously the creators of these yeah, products are going balance, to have their own great. political views, and they're going to build a following based around those political views. The Goya beans, the My Pillow, um, all of that's going to continue yeah. to happen when we live on when we have these industries whose main motivation is to make money, they're going to do whatever they need. Good catch there, Zan. I heard that. By the way, I heard that, Zan. You almost said, when we live under capitalism, you caught yourself, and you said, when we, when we live in a society where companies just want to make money. Good move. Smart move for this conversation, because you're talking to normies here. Good catch to to make money they're never Absolutely. gonna go they're never gonna push the envelope too far obviously but they will go as far as it takes to make the money so that seems like something more so to criticize about those industries no, it, there's a time and a place to talk about capitalism it's just not in this conversation this conversation you don't want to bring up capitalism the economic system within we with, with which we live rather than like 
this intangible idea that kind of floats around in the ether that we can't really stick with like a, a, a spear to figure out whatever, what exactly is causing it or who is propagating it. Correct. Comrade, can I say something about, uh, about the problem of capitalism? One of the big- See, now she sounds weird. She brings up, she sounds fucking weird. But nobody else, no one except for terminally online people are going to notice that. Normies will never notice that. Yep, you did. That was very good there. Sorry. I don't know if you meant that 100%, but you did a good job one way or another. Biggest issues I've, I, I agree with you on all of this, actually. And one of the biggest issues that I've identified, certainly in the media sphere, is something that I have, I'm working on an article <laughs> on right now, something I've dubbed. <laughs> that was so good. Systemic, oh. cap systemic tabloidism and how capitalism, classism, and dehumanization has been pushing journalists to divert all of the important conversations we need to be having to kind of this just like horribly shallow cancel culture type conversation you know if you, you have all of these sociopaths or not all these sociopaths some sociopaths and some people that are just dragged into their system of writing creating clickbait having to write four to five articles a day having to find something to cancel having to find some what? problem with society without any deep nuanced view what is she talking about they constantly have to make what money. is she talking about who what what is she talking about who is she talking to who is she fucking talking to if she's trying to reach normies, normies read that stuff. Normies like that stuff. Normal people read Teen Vogue. Normal people read BuzzFeed. What is she talking about? For the Huffington Post, they have to make money for The Guardian. They have to make money uh, for, you know, the ABC, whatever it might be. And it's all become about profit and not about people. And it used to be also about tackling really big problems and powerful people in society. We need to talk exactly. about the problem Any with askers? pedophilia and Prince Andrew. We need to talk about uh, these issues with crime. Pedophilia and Prince Andrew? What? 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 that's going on in government and politicians that are making sketchy deals to make their companies money and uh, crony capitalism but another aspect of systemic tabloidism is while pushing people to just write clickbait they also have realized they can only sl they can slander people and slander makes them more money and the more money they make they have more money to, to defend from slander suits but they can only slander people of a certain class because otherwise if you slander someone like hulk hogan who can afford to make a sustained court case against you that was in 2016. Hulk Hogan happened in 2016. Five fucking years ago. Nobody cares. Their whole outlet will shut down like Gawker has. So what they've done is- Gawker? Gawker hasn't existed for like five years. They found a class- Gawker is a millennial magazine, not a Zoomer magazine. Oh my God. Have lots of views have lots of eyeballs on them but don't have the same amount of money and just happen to be in direct competition with the mainstream media which is youtubers and they've made them the main target of all of their hold on a second real quick real quick we're gonna do a quick poll real quick are if you're a zoomer which means you're 26 or younger do you know what Gawker is? 26 or younger? If you're younger than 26. So, 73%. 71%. 62 people just voted in this poll, okay? Okay, Se 62 people just voted, 70% of those people who are, I'm sorry, if you're watching my stream, you are a politically plugged in, terminally online lefty, that's okay, but it's fine, don't know who Gawker is. Normies have no fucking clue. If you, the terminally online, politically plugged in Zoomers, have no clue what Gawker is, normies have no fucking clue. Nobody ever, nobody knows. 
Oh, you should send me that. Slander harassment. Send me those in DM so I can check it afterwards, Dan, on, on Discord. Whilst ignoring mm -hmm. these genuinely wealthy, powerful people. Because once again, it's about money. They know we can't sue them. They know we can't shut down uh, their companies. because the It sounds like a gay app. Yes. Average YouTuber's salary, you'd have to pay three years of it to go with the defamation case. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and we need to address that. We need yeah. to address Am I going to tell you what Gawker is? You don't need to know. It's a magazine that went under like five years ago. It's a random online magazine that appealed to like tech bro, uh, tech bro, normie millennials. Nobody, nobody knows because it's been gone forever. These problems. Yeah, of course. I, these are... I, I am not this like hardcore. We need to have, <laughs> we need the... to have just a capitalist free market where you can sell babies heroin and have them working in your, yeah, of, you know, of course. bauxite mine for $2 an hour. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I feel like this is, it might be, this was a bit of a departure from what I was talking about, but I feel like where, where you moved into, we, we have, <laughs> yeah, but it's fun. It's fun. Um, but I feel like this goes back to the political disaffection. People are, True, are being sold what, what sells. They, and it's mostly not politi yeah. like serious political issues. How many people do you think, if you ask right now, know about the Uyghur genocide happening in China right now? Most right. people probably right. don't because that kind of news doesn't sell. So that's what I'm talking about when I say that I want to fight against political disaffection. I feel like that's a huge problem. People so why do you guys not attack the media who have been such a problem in this? This I do. has been a completely concern. Well, uh -oh. largely, Whoops. if you look at it, the conservatives Whoopsies. have been the ones that have been battling with the mainstream media saying I'm not cottagecore lefty. It's just, listen, cottagecore lefty says, Mama, you're the only good millennial. No, they're just, listen, millennials, millennials are at the tipping point right now. We are either going to, like, millennials right now are either going to break and turn into Gen Z, where we take the black pill and, and, and just die, basically, lay down and die, or we're going to snap and go the path of me, which is you say, nah, fuck it! I've had enough of this shit! It's demon time! One of the two. That's, that's the two paths for the millennials going forward. And there's a lot of good millennials out there. They just hurt. Listen, I'm going to be completely honest. Sorry to be one of those. Sorry to be one of those people. Millennials are hurting. Everybody, millennials, we have not had a good time. Yay, Grant Crime Dango! Yay! I'm so happy to see you! Um, uh, yeah, um, sorry. <clears throat> sorry, I was, I was, I was being, being very silly. Um, but, uh, millennials are... Listen, millennials are hurting, okay? That's the thing. Millennials have not had a good time. Let me just tell you from my own personal experience. I was working my hardest. Like, I was working three jobs in the aftermath of the financial crisis. I worked my ass off and made less and less and less money each year. I was struggling. I was hurting. Everybody I knew was struggling and hurting. Millennials have not had a good time. That's why you don't hear much about millennials. But I believe that millennials will not become the next Gen, Gen X. Excellent. Excellent. I'll check that afterwards, Zan. Three, I think we've been through two full recessions. And now we're going through a depression. So... And, and don't get me wrong. This doesn't mean that I don't think that Zoomers have had a hard time. They have. And this is why I believe, everyone, this is why I believe in the Millennial Zoomer Alliance. The Millennial Zoomer Alliance must be built. The Millennials, we must embrace our monstrous forms and go, we must protect the Zoomers. We must protect the Zoomers at all costs. They're the future. If we can protect the Zoomers, we can win the world. That's what the Millennials have to do. We need the Millennial Zoomer Alliance. Let's continue. These guys are lying. These guys are manipulating the because public. Because when they're conservatives, slandering people. When conservatives attack the mainstream media, they do it. All I'm going to say is that if we don't get our shit together, if we don't realize the strength that can come from the alliance between millennials and Zoomers, then there's no way that we will be able to make it through the future. There's no way we are going to be able to overcome Metal Gear. For the wrong reasons and from the wrong position. I attack the mainstream media. Who decides media? what the wrong reasons are? 
investigations. You can you can have independent journalists that investigate these things. When cons when like so, you, so when I attack the mainstream media for slander, you think I'm doing it for the wrong reasons? Can you give me an example of this? So like let's say the New York Times. The Zoomer the the Zoomer Millennial Alliance is a weapon that can true that can that can overcome a weapon. <laughs> Sorry, I fucked up the line. Whatever, fuck it. I fucked up the line. Falsely published that uh, the Christchurch shooter donated to me, and this was republished in multiple different outlets. They then deleted their tweet, but didn't. The other outlets had already republished it, so they didn't correct it. And now tons of people think this actually happened. Um, An alliance to surpass Metal Gear. So questioning the mainstream media for. So the Christchurch shooter donated to a organization that I believe you worked with for Borderless. I think was what actually happened. And no, but none of that happened. <laughs> from no, from my understanding. So which, the, so which organization? It was in, it was in Bulgaria. It was in Bulgaria. Bulgaria. It was a it was a Bulgarian like militia that was searching for um uh, uh like illegal um uh, uh, refugees in in the woods, and that uh, organization was associated with like actual designated like white supremacist uh, other organizations. So this is the first, this is and the they first donated to that. I'm hearing of that, and that wasn't the claim. That I'm not claiming that you knew about that, but I. I oh, oh my God, that is a drop! Holy shit, that was good. So see, this is what we call how you use the bud buzzwords well. Watch this. Zan, I don't even know if what Zan said is true. Okay, but wa listen to this, okay? Uh, we're gonna watch it again. Watch this. I don't even know if Zan is telling the truth right now, and I don't care, actually. Let's wait. Here's why. Because we're not talking about the truth right now. We're talking about the presentation. Let's do this. Or, um, uh, uh, like illegal um, uh, uh, refugees in, in the woods. And, uh, Let's go back, sorry. It was in Bulgaria. It was in Bulgaria. I want to go all the way back. So, questioning the mainstream media for? So the Christchurch shooter donated to a organization that I believe you worked with for Borderless, I think was what actually happened. And no, but none of that happened. <laughs> from, no, so from my first she claims none of that happened. And it was good that you kept pushing. Standing which, the, so which organization? It was in, it was in Bulgaria. Borderless? It was in Bulgaria. And now she has to ask because she realizes, oh shit, I might get fact checked on this. Area. It was a it was a Bulgarian like militia that was searching for um uh, uh like illegal um uh, uh, refugees in in the woods and that uh, organization was associated with like actual designated like white supremacist uh, other organizations so this is the first, this is and the they first donated to that. that. Oh, this is the first I've ever heard of that. That looks bad. Zant now Zan stumbled a little bit. It would have been better if he had the name on hand, but white nationalist is a buzzword right now that people listen for and Zan got her on it and she stumbled really bad she should have been able to say no this is false that has been debunked she couldn't she didn't that wasn't the claim that i'm not claiming that you knew about that but I, I i'd already learned about that and i i knew of that so i understand i understand where you're coming from because i'm pretty sure the no, Christchurch once, shooter once again, didn't donate to you claim, that's not even the claim the new york times made and i've never heard of that and i feel like i would have heard of it by now if that were even remotely true oh was it was it generation uh, maybe you can I send that to me maybe yeah sure i can i can whenever if you want me to, um, I have to do it off screen. Anyway, so the point there, we're... the point there is, is that they are spreading demonstrable slanderous lies that ruin people's lives. Did they, did and they, not correcting it? Did they correct it? Did they remove it from the article? No, they did. They, they just delete. They deleted their tweet about it, and then all. Now other... it sounds bad. She's stumbling again. Publications had already shared it and shared the tweet, and uh, you know, uh, cited the tweet, and they never posted a correction. D then so you, it was never then you're you're losing out on a lot of money right now. I know it's expensive, but no, the, I'm not. the payoff. No, I'm not. Do you know how you much the average? You can sue for that. You, you could, no, if you can prove, if you can prove that the, that these media outlets- Oh God, you called her on it. You fucking called her on it. You're missing out on a lot of money. Why didn't you sue? Uh-oh. That's knowingly lied about something you can objectively prove to be untrue. Uh, that there's no evidence anywhere that the Christchurch shooter actually donated to you. You can make quite a bit of money off of a suit for that. You think I haven't talked to lawyers about this? But I believe the quote directly from my lawyer that I spoke to last month was, Lauren, defamation is a rich man's game. And this is where the classism comes into it once again. Oh, These classism is a big issue. Do Don't get me wrong. I know about of slap course. suits, but like, if you're, you it can... Costs, do you, do, okay, let me ask you, Xander. Do you have a 100K just... No, I don't. Around? You're much larger than I am, okay, though. Well, then you couldn't do it either. I, oh! I don't have a oh! I'm sorry. Oh! <laughs> well, I don't know how much people think YouTubers make, but you, you, people don't just have hundreds of thousands of dollars that of they can throw not. away. Plus, in the States, you have to be able to prove malice. You have to be able to prove all these extenuating factors. So the media are able to get away with so many lies, so much dishonesty. I'll even point out the ABC here. I actually need to go and correct it today. I've been meaning to because I accidentally believed the ABC, who shared a video of this uh, dance crew twerking in front of a bunch of, like doing kind of a twerk style dance. In what does that, 
What does twerking have to do with anything? Front of the launching of a military ship and the governor general was there and all these high up individuals in military and this the way they do these ships is these ships adopt the historic names of military boats that have already gone out and set sail people who have died ships that have been kind of sunk you know or not kind of sunk in world oh my god that's another boomerism she kept saying the abc and i just realized she meant abc news when she said the abc Oh my God, that's a Canadian boomerism. It's because there it's the CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. We don't do that here. We don't do that here. Oh, she meant that one? Well, then nobody, then especially nobody's gonna do know what that means. World War II, and the idea is- when I just did an Americanism, but who cares? The audience is American. The same name and rename them. The, the crews never die. They live on. It's a very important hold on. ceremony hold, that occurs here. I, I feel like this is like a really big pivot, but I'm looking, I looked it up right now, and it does not seem like uh, defamation suits are nearly as expensive as you made them out to be. Okay, wait, can we, can we get back to that? I just want to make this point here. Uh -oh. Okay, sure. Um, so this crew, I mean, I uh -oh. just stared at it, and I was like, this is like, read your audience. This looks ridiculous. What are you guys doing? Everyone looks so uncomfortable there. Turns out, Actually, the dance crew were the victims. They went to go hire an Aboriginal dance crew to do a traditional, to do a kind of Aboriginal dance to open the ceremony. And the dance crew asked them, would you like a contemporary, more pop culture dance, or would you like a Zan's dance? Zan's expression here is, is every single person listening to this having no fucking clue what the fuck she's talking about. No one has any clue what the fuck she's talking about. Yes. Whoever hired them said they wanted the... Uh, modern pop culture. Wait, one, yes, so ABC exists, but nobody calls it the ABC. And the ABC went on to edit the governor general watching when he wasn't even there, concocting this entire situation that make the dancers look horrible, that make it look like they're just disrespecting the governor general and mocking this when none of that occurred. And this happens on Is a daily basis, both towards the uh, right wing audience who will get outraged over it and a left wing. Every single day, twerking. Aboriginal people make the governor general of the ABC look bad? I'm I'm sorry. What? What? Audience will get outraged over it. And we cannot have proper conversations about politics. We cannot have any sort of real battle against the problems caused by the powers that be what? when- oh, Hold on, you're, ramp, you're, you're going on, getting, you're gish we are getting so much misinformation. Okay, that, when we are getting so much misinformation, okay. that's the point I'm making. But sorry, go, go ahead with the defamation case, because I can show you the email from my lawyer quoting me 100K to 150. Okay, maybe you have a bad lawyer, I don't know. I've never sued anyone for defamation. <laughs> no, that's the average. I've, I've oh. never sued anyone for defamation before, but it seems as though oh. in most cases- The serfs, I actually disagree. I don't think this is a dumpster fire at all. I think this is really good so far. I don't know why I, I'm interested. Is, Lance, do you want to talk about it afterwards? Because I don't think this was a dumpster fire at all so far. So far, I've been very impressed with this. I'd, I'd love to hear. Okay, we'll see what the end is. All right, I'll wait till the end. I don't want to give my final take. I, I did miss to, to be in complete, in, in complete, um, in complete fairness, I actually missed the ending. So though I've seen most of this, I did not see the ending because I had to carry groceries inside. So I missed like the last like 30 minutes carrying my groceries inside. But I'd be super interested to hear what other people say because I'm gonna give my full take at the end. Okay, let's get into here. Whenever a news organization, a mainstream news organization puts out a outright slanderous, easy to prove lie, typically they're held to account for that. Now don't get me wrong, slap suits are a big problem. You're aware of like what a slap suit is, right? <laughs> Sorry, explain that. I, I, I'm just over the no most most mainstream outlets are not held accountable for slander and i really it's so difficult cross-border it is so difficult um once again you have to be able to prove malice there's a statute of limitations so if you don't do it within a year you can't sue them anymore there are so many extenuating circumstances that would not be included in what you just looked up in your google search i really would encourage people to look up a story which i don't agree my was finally covered pop, uh, properly by buzzfeed about a i don't agree Polish so far family. this is really good uh, I, I have to find the, the name maybe Polish maybe it'll get really bad at the end Speed All right. Metro. I'm just gonna so find the again, article. just so everyone's clear where I'm at here, this is my second watch through, although I missed the ending admittedly last time. So I'm gonna catch the ending this time. I thought it was good yesterday when I watched it live, and I actually think it's better than I thought originally. Let's see okay, what happens. Listen, all right, before before you go on any longer, I'll take I'll take your word for it that yeah. these court that these big organizations are able to get away with spreading blatant lies. But we'll at least out. from what I've seen, 
especially with, with the New York Times specifically, I've seen them go back on articles that I've been involved in because I had a pretty close involvement with this one, um, post something that was accidentally misinformation and nothing. voluntarily go back and change it once they were made aware. You and it wasn't a big deal. They went back, they changed it. Normally um, I think you get it had something nothing. to do with Philip DeFranco. This is typically what ends up happening. If there are cases where some person is lied about by a mainstream media organization, if I find out about it, you better believe in me to get on top of that shit, okay? I'm a very big uh, a propagator of the idea that if you have a serious issue with someone, then you shouldn't have to lie about them in order to bring up that problem. But in most cases, it doesn't really seem like that's that's what happens. In most cases. Yeah, no, it's... In, in most cases, the media do not correct themselves and don't have to because people can't afford to. And if they did once or twice because you sent them an email, that's very nice of them. But this doesn't usually happen. I'm, I'm in multiple cases with uh, media outlets right now. Uh, luckily, in some cases, I've been able to find lawyers that are willing to do it pro bono, which is not common at all. Um, but no, it's it's not simple. And I think anyone who does a little more surface level, a little more research. Fun fact. Fun fact. Want to know a fun fact? In major media lawsuits, if there's a chance that you're going to win, if there's, this is the, I'm about to tell you, Xander Hall. In major media lawsuits, if there's a chance that you're going to win, Lawyers will agree to do it often for no upfront cost. I, love, I know a lot of people don't know this, but what they will do is they will get paid out of the winnings if you have a case that has merit because they know they're going to make a lot of money, right? Yes, Herulean Hellhound, contingency fee. Yup, Herulean Hellhound, our resident lawyer. That is actually how it works. If a lawyer think, especially with a high profile case, like suing a major media company, they will say, we'll pay at the end. You don't pay anything up front. I'll take your case and I pay myself out of the, t out of the winnings. So there you go. 25 is standard for plaintiff's lawyers. Defamation suits can get massive punitive damages. Yes, yes. then surface level would find that. Sorry, I'm just trying to find one really important article here. Okay, uh, here it out. Here it is. There's a guy named Molodinsky. There was a huge BuzzFeed article about it, and he's a Polish man who had a ton of articles wait, in the Metro wait, Daily even, Mail. The, hold on, hold on. The example you brought up, ABC apologizes for Australian Navy ship twerking video after dancers alleged deceptive editing. The, the twerking yeah, dancing troupe who performed... they apologize, but what I'm saying is this deceptive... Once that this, has Hold on, Lauren, this always happens. Wait, this always happens. When I talk to people and they bring up these examples and I can't look them up right away. Thankfully, I have my chat here. But usually whenever I hear these examples and I can't look them up right away, later I'll go and I'll find out that... These this were a good one. For. These things were apologized for. No, These things but, were okay, amended. My, my point, but yes. I can't look up, many, look them up at the cases, moment. In some cases, the apology does happen, which thank goodness. The unfortunate part is most it. people don't see the apology. And I've, I've experienced this so much in my personal life. Uh, I, I had a huge article. Oh, I think it was by the New Yorker. I don't want to exactly say. I published all of the evidence of this, but they wrote an article alleging that I lied to individuals that I had in my movie Farmlands, and I took advantage of them. And it was really awful. It, it made me look very, very bad. Now, I sent them proof that this was untrue. Massive I sent them all the messages with this individual that was in the movie that showed that she was overjoyed by her portrayal. She was so excited to talk to us about the farm murders. She couldn't believe how much attention and joy she was getting from it. And the article just said the complete opposite. Uh, Ariel, her name was, sent me an apology and said, I'm so sorry, I can't believe I misreported this. Let's try to, let's try to fix this. So we went back and forth for a month. Actually, I have an even hotter take, Exia Ross. I have an even hotter take. It was untrue. And I'll and tell you even, later. They said they would publish in letters to the editors. I have an even hotter take. And they even inserted People are gonna in my get mad at me. It is Lauren's opinion that this is inaccurate. All right, it wasn't don't my worry. opinion. So it wasn't accurate. They published it. the letters to the editor. It was never seen by anyone. The original article was never corrected. It never went to print. It was just on a random web page of the site you can never find. The That's quote, what usually happens. So I, I assume you're referencing the quote from the lady whose father was killed on that farm in South Africa, right? Correct. From my understanding, the exact quote was that she felt exploited and that she hadn't been fully made aware of the purpose of the interview. She didn't know what your uh, goal was or what, what, why you were asking these questions. And when she found out... Hannah she... Thing, my family sued a major Fortune 500 cable company that caused my lifetime disability in an accident. Our, la our lawyer did it free as he took 10% of our settlement once it was resolved. Lauren is a dum-dum and doesn't understand litigation. Yep, she lied. It's because she doesn't have a case. You felt like she'd been exploited. Do you want to know who actually, do you want to know who can't sue? It's not people like Lauren. People who can't sue are people like me five years ago. Five years ago, when my insurance company ripped me off, 
over $3,000, which to me was backbreaking at the time because I was poor as shit. I couldn't sue because then I would need a lawyer that I needed to pay up front over $3,000. And the, and the insurance company knew they could call my bluff and they could get away with not paying me the $3,000 that I needed. And they did because I couldn't get a lawyer. People who are really poor and have to do that type of litigation can't get litigation that they need. A defamation suit against a major media corporation? Nah, she's bullshitting. She doesn't have a case. She doesn't have a case. And that was the right. that was and the quote so we that sent, I saw. We sent all of the private messages talking to her, which she was fully aware of what the interview was for. She loved the portrayal. She thought it was all great. And we sent these to uh, the New Yorker, and they all apologized. They literally apologized to me for publishing what they had and not uh, fact checking with me, and said yes, this was inaccurate, and then refused to publish the correction. They only published it on an unseen page and said it was my opinion rather than truth. Okay. So that's, I mean, I can send you all, the, I've uploaded it to my Facebook and Twitter before, but I can re-upload it. If that's true, if what she's claiming here is true, if what she is claiming here is true, she should be able to sue for it. Send it to you after this if you'd like, but that's what usually If happens. this is true, she should be able to sue for this. Why, why did the lady say that she felt exploited then? That's a very good question. And I would love to see what the actual questions were from the journalist, because I've done interviews with journalists where... They have taken quotes of mine completely out of context, completely out of entirely different conversations, and put them in place of a narrative they've written beforehand. And I wouldn't be surprised if that happened in this instance. Okay. Um, so what did you? What was the um, uh, uh, the publication that you I said? Was making. Ha, ha. Oh, sorry, I think it was the New Yorker. It was the New Yorker. Okay, I I'm not saying. I think it was the New Yorker. Uh oh. Anything from the New Yorker here? Every article that came up when I looked up Lawrence Southern Christchurch um, donated money. I, all I see is the Christchurch gunman. Oh, sorry, sorry, I was talking about that South Africa one. Uh, that's that was in the Daily Dot and the Daily Dot. Oh my God, Daily Dot. The Daily Dot. The Daily Dot is. That is. Uh, that's the one that had the fucking Dan Avidan. It's a tiny magazine. Oh my god, Daily Dot is a tiny magazine. She's complaining about a tiny magazine. She lied. Oh god. Holy shit. She's so she failed so hard here. Oh my god. Pendant? No, not the oh, maybe they said it too, but I can't remember what it's called. There was one other outlet that repeated it, and it was like direct. Uh, oh, you know what? I've got an email to my lawyer here. But the notice anyway. how much of a backpedal this is. Massive backpedal. So we're getting off topic. Can we finish the book here? Because the point I was making is we can't have these nuanced conversations about politics until we deal with the people that are, quite frankly, controlling the narrative and controlling how people think, lying, yeah, yeah, I agree. And yeah, boys, misportraying boy. and misdirecting. Yep what conversations the public should actually be having first. And until we hold these people to account, the public are going to be constantly pitted against each other, have people's views misportrayed to them, have people that are legit. I mean, look what happened to Bernie Sanders. There are so many people that are kind of the, those who want to criticize the establishment that could get completely torn down by biased media Wait, that are not addressed. Hold on. It says here, biased systems. it's a, it's a quote. So what you're referencing from the daily dot is a quote saying that he donated the the Christchurch shooter had donated to your media company or donated to a media company you're affiliated with not specifically to you no he said he donated to my media company and that is why he deleted the tweet and even that isn't true that he donated to a company i was affiliated with the rebel so media the person hosted the finance wait, so the, the, the rebel media sorry the person that the daily dot interviewed lied about you it wasn't the daily dot lying about you it was the new york times writer the the roos it was a new york it was the kevin roos kevin roos uh, writer okay yeah. so they interviewed him and he lied about you as far he as I'm aware, as far as I'm aware, to be fair. Thousands of retweets. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so these are just. Notice she doesn't say that he lied because then he could sue her. Holy shit, Zan, this is delightful. This section, delightful. These statements that keep going out are completely false and easy to debunk, but. These publications, I've sent, I've sent the Daily Dot, I've sent all these people uh, to lawyers and asked about it, and they're like, there's no point. There's no point. The amount of time and the amount of money is not worth it, and it's unlikely, it, it's, they'll just be able to say, uh, you know, there was no malice behind it. So it's fine. And they'll probably just ignore your messages. I've sent tons of letters to outlets, some I'm pursuing a bit harder than others, and hopefully that will turn out, but defamation cases can take years, like seven years. Yeah, Plus they can be they can be drawn years, out. But yeah. by that time, yeah, by that time, people's reputations are ruined. And I don't. Once again, you guys might think this is just 
a right wing issue, but this ruins lots of people's lives that are normal people that have no political affiliations. Typic and that's why I was bringing up that Polish photographer, mm -hmm. Molodinsky, who had all these stories in the Daily Mail and the Daily Dot published about him saying a he lied. Polish photographer. Who the fuck is she talking about? Lied about his community, saying he lied about another couple, calling them drunkards that uh, were on a sleigh trying to that we're almost running people over it's it's a long story you'll have to go read okay. it um i'll look into it I, I did i did a video called sainthood for sale right. on it and he didn't leave his house for over a year I, yeah. after the article was published because his community mm -hmm. hated him he had to go to the doctors to get drugs I, 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 or I, mental health issues like it just ruined his life and the prosecutors I, wouldn't even i get it, it. I, I understand I've, I've talked about this issue a lot before i think uh if anyone wants to learn more there's actually a pretty good john oliver segment about slap suits he criticized um what was his name something murray he was the owner of a coal company and when he criticized him murray levied a bunch of slap suits against him thinking that they could uh drain all of his money and they wouldn't be able to afford to keep on defending against these bogus lawsuits this kind of thing bob murray yes this kind of thing does happen um, and, and there is worth in criticizing mainstream media and these large companies. I think the problem is true, our capitalist system. True, but devious I think we're ready to move on to the final letter. I'll, I'll look into it. Is Xander Hall's That's Nice Honey to a five year old saying that a, a bumblebee just toppled a car? True. Ready, Lauren? All right, let's do it. All right. I'm excited. Oh, well, last thank letter you, is X. I'll this is a hard one. Thoughts. I was Listen, thinking like, oh. I'm, I, I explained my thoughts in the beginning, but for people who've come in since the beginning, I'll explain my reasoning behind all of these things at the end. I'll go over and summarize my takes. Shit. What's You're gonna... skipping over patriotism? Um, I mean, it, I'm excited for that. it depends on how much... My main idea for patriotism isn't isn't anything crazy. It's just, it, would you... Hold on, I'll just ask you. Do you think if there's like a, a very... Like a tyrant, that was another letter. If there is a tyrant in charge of your country, is it unpatriotic to say, criticize that tyrant or to burn your country's flag or to protest to try to make that country better? Is that unpatriotic? Well, but this was going to be my point and why I was excited to talk about it, because I actually think, arguably, throughout history, patriotism has been more of a left-leaning thing than a right-leaning thing. I, of course, portray it in a neutral term, but, uh, you right. know, every single anti-government, anti-aristocrat uh, like movement has been has, has considered itself patriotic, whether it be the Risorgimento, Resor probably pronounced that wrong, the Italian radical left-wing patriotic movement, which uh, was anti-Habsburg, anti-clerical, and if it happened today, we call it a post-colonial movement, the American Revolution, which of course, uh, by the standards of the time, was going against the rule of a king uh, at a time where you know, absolute monarchy was a thing worldwide, and they were instituting a constitutional democracy, which was clearly so, a move to the left. The Viet Cong were explicitly patriots and nationalists, so, um, most liberation so, movements. So, what so you're I saying just wanted is... to make the point that Patriotism is not some sort of relic from the right wing. So I didn't think. Yeah. So I'm surprised you actually didn't have a problem and we didn't get into it. But uh, I guess you thought that. Through. That's yeah. a bad look for her. Again, being like, I'm surprised you didn't have a problem as she goes off on some complete rant and Zan's just like, well, yeah, what? Like it, this really sells home that she was she's trying to make Zan seem like a triggered SJW, but it didn't work. It didn't work. Yeah, so, so what you're saying is, and at least this is my opinion, you can correct me if I'm wrong, this is what I believe, I don't think patriotism has any uh, left-right political bias, personally. Um, it, it's, it's more of a... What I'm really curious about is, is it unpatriotic to do something like burn the American flag? Would that be an unpatriotic action? I'd consider it unpatriotic, yeah, to burn the flag. Because, you know, the idea of patriotism is you love your country and the people in it, sometimes even over the government or the powers that be. It's about the people, and that flag i'd like to think is a symbol of the country and not necessarily the government and that that's been the case throughout all all of these revolutions in history the revolutionaries liberation movements have waved their country's flags at some points even while opposing flag. the current governments so i do think it's unpatriotic to burn your flag first i completely disagree i think that the fact that at least I, I know you're canadian living in australia but i'm american here in yeah. america i think that burning the american flag is the most patriotic thing you can do because we're in a very privileged position where we have the right to criticize the government which a lot of people in a lot, a lot of places in the world don't have the right to do there are laws against burning the flag in, in a lot True of other countries though. our, our uh, veterans our soldiers fought for our right to be able to criticize our government and if that takes the form if our freedom of speech our freedom of expression takes the form of burning the american flag because we want to make it we want to make our country better and we are trying to uh demonstrate where we feel like the country is right now and how it needs to be improved i feel like that is the most patriotic thing that you can do burning the by the way this is going to sell very well to zoomers right now this comes across as super pro spe free speech super pro american super super uh, like, like cool. It, it comes off as cool is what it comes off as. Sorry. It's just true. The only people who don't, who are going to be mad about this is boomers. And guess what? 
That's not who's on the internet in in droves right now. The I, symbol I that represents your country. Own because the flag is supposed to be a, a symbol of the country, not necessarily the government of the day, as the flag stays the same throughout all of the governments. Well, the government so, runs the country. You know, it's it's not... I, I don't think so. I think the country is the people in it, and the government are just some people we have put in as organizers that are supposed to be responsible to us and not the other way around. But when you're, this doesn't have to just be referring to the government. You can also be criticizing the culture of your country or behavior if, if or things flag, that are happening. If the flag were a symbol of just one government at the time, like they switched it and they're like, this is officially the flag of the Republicans, uh, that would make sense. You know, if you went out even, and you were opposing Trump and burning a mega flag, even if you that were, makes sense to me. But to burn the American flag just seems like a, a self even if you just know. Even if you were burning the American flag just for fun, just because you were like, eh, I'm just going to burn it. Okay, that go. action okay, is patriotic point, point because, is, okay. I don't know. I, what, think, what I, think it's, I think it's unpatriotic and dumb. Burning the presidential effigy, an effigy of the president, that may be patriotic if the okay. president is being oppressive and horrible to the people, sure. But I, I disagree with you on the flag point. I, I All think right. that's... My, my reasoning for why I think it's patriotic to burn the flag is because you're exercising a right that is pretty unique to Americans, where you are allowed to burn the symbol of your country, because there's a lot of people that don't have that right. And America's all about freedom, exercising that freedom to okay. do something. So if people go in the street and start yelling the N-word, is that patriotic because they're expressing their right to do it? And they're in America, and they have the right I mean, to do that. America is, pre don't America speak, is pretty so racist, so yeah, it could be pretty patriotic. <laughs> Oh, good. That was a good response there. Yeah, just just like just like letting that one sit. Good one. That is patriotism to you. Uh, if if America to you is about racism, then yeah, that would probably be pretty patriotic. It's a subjective thing. Oh, you Oof. think patriotism is subjective? Absolutely. You don't think it's, Many people uh, believe that loving, criticizing you know, the government you don't think is unpatriotic. Patriotism is loving your your country, wanting the best for your country and the people in it. Because yeah. I would argue that that's that's not most people's the opinion word, on it. The word patriotism has a definition. The only thing that differs is how you think we should make the country so, better. And if you think that people, I, I don't think there's anyone. I mean, maybe <laughs> I don't think there's anyone that thinks they're making the country better by uh, yelling the N word what, in a public square to rile people up. What is what is better is subjective. People who want who wish slavery would come back believe that they're not being slavery is unpatriotic. So, of course, if somebody right. believes that, they'd be going out in the street yelling the N-word. Maybe, maybe I just disagree with you because I don't think either of those things make the country better. But I, I, would you agree that at least the definition of patriotism is wanting to wanting the best for your country and wanting it to be a better place? And this is why, in some instances, yeah, I, agree with I that definition. consider Black Lives Matter activists, if they truly think, you know, pursuing Patriotic, the form yeah. of the police is going to make the country better, they, they can absolutely be patriots, too. Okay. Yeah, we That was we good. You got her to admit that Black Lives Matter protesters are patriotic. That's a good look. We don't disagree there, but I, I believe that like criticizing your ability to have like freedom of speech, for example, criticizing the state of the country, the culture of the country, all of that is patriotic because one of the core, the num the First Amendment is about having the right to do that, to even criticize your right. The First Amendment grants you the right to criticize having the right to criticize the First Amendment. You can go back as far as you want with that one. No, I believe I, that's I, patriotic. You know, I, like I don't, I don't disagree with you that you should, you know, I know some people disagree with me on the right, but sure, I, I don't think you should be tackled and have a... a be pepper sprayed or put in jail for burning the flag or criticizing okay. the country. I don't think that. Because yeah, I, I know um, a lot of people who do believe that. I'm glad you don't. I, I, I would disagree with someone who argued that was improving the country. That's where I would go. Especially if, because I've, I've also made the argument before that, you know, sometimes you have to be a friend, offensive to make critiques of the powers that be and some of the social systems that, that be. That's been the basis of a lot of my political activism historically. And so I definitely wouldn't disagree with you there that sometimes you do have to be offensive to criticize the powers that be. I just would disagree that there's like... I like that too. I, yeah. I, I don't think the burning the flag is making that much of a point anymore since people have done it so much and it's really not owning anyone anymore except yeah. for maybe their own image of I'm glad, doing, I'm glad, working towards... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm glad that the, the burning the flag thing isn't a very currently relevant thing going on in, in politics. It's not like part of the culture we're narrative. Yeah, that's moment. what I mean. <laughs> it, it does seem like these issues... Like back in... I remember back in 2016... Everybody was was arguing over the um, the right to burn the American flag. But are you ready for X? This is I was right. I was thinking how are you gonna how are you gonna rhyme X? There are not a lot of words that start with X. However, <laughs> yeah, I, I was out of the box. I, I was really surprised when I saw X is for Xander Hall. I was pretty surprised. I didn't know that you were slick. That was slick as fuck. That was slick as fuck. I loved it. That was slick as fuck. You're so aware of me. Um, no, but X. <laughs> Welcome. X is for I'm censorship. So you got a copy and saw it. Yeah. <laughs> X is for censorship. Xenial, Zulos, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Xylophone or Xenon. There are there are so many ways I or, God, I'm I'm already flustered. There are so many words I could lean on. X isn't only a letter though. It can be very dangerous, so you should know. X is the symbol of censorship. Free speech and thought are what that seeks to trip. 
Or just strip? Yeah, I can't read. Censorship's dangers are vital to know because XXXXX, about as ironically as many times uh, as my name has letters. So that could just be censoring Xander Hall. Um, that's my headcanon. Those X's are censoring my name. That's why it's dangerous. Because yeah. Xander Hall. Oh. Are you getting curious what's blocked by that X? Sorry, they censored that part of the text. You'll never know what it said or might say. This is why censorship's never okay. So we're going to do a bit of a, um, what's that one YouTube channel where they ask, like, the rapper, they, like, play a bit of the rapper's lyrics, and they're like, okay, so what were you thinking? What did you mean by that? What were you thinking? Uh, I forget what it's called. It's like, um, genius, yeah. So what, what, what were you thinking when, when you came up with those bars? Well, let me tell you. Now, generally, I think that censorship is not a great idea. I think throughout history, it has been used to uh, shut down dissident voices. It's been used to shut down criticisms of tyrannical governments. It's been used to shut up voices that we really need to hear all sorts of perspectives, whether left or right. And as a general rule, I don't think it's a good thing. I'm sure you're going to sit here and try to pull up the exceptions, try to see if you can get me on one of those. But once again, it's a kid's book, not a political textbook. It's, that sounded uh, super petty. Um, a general rule. I, I, I actually just have questions, not really much to argue. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, what is your- Again, that sounded super petty. Definition of censorship, like how broad is it? the shutdown, especially on a political level, legal level, of people's uh, First Amendment rights, being able to have a conversation, being, and, and even on a private level, I would argue that I have problems with uh, corporations that are supposed to be platforms for free speech, like Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, that have claimed publicly, you know, we want people to have open debate, shutting people up because they are criticizing authorities, or shutting people up because they uh, have opinions that aren't necessarily um, deemed to be within the status quo. So just this morning, with no explanation, James O'Keefe lost his Twitter account because he's been putting out leaks of CNN saying they deliberately tried to sway the election using propaganda. I think that's really worthy to talk about, whether our media are unbiased or whether they are deliberately trying to influence us in political ways. And his account was shut down. Now, we haven't really been given an explanation for that yet. Maybe it was because there's a legal suit behind it. I don't know. Maybe there's an explanation. But if there's not, I think that's a very wrong thing to do and very dangerous because then people can't see critiques of authority and genuine wrongdoing. So... You bring up a lot of examples, so I want to make sure I got ahead ahead on this one just because I'm I'm a very curious boy. I like learning about things, and it seems like the reason that Twitter banned uh, James O'Keefe was for violating its platform manipulation and spam policy. I guess what he did was he had multiple accounts going, and he was making sock accounts. Uh oh. Well, I'll have to see proof for that because I doubt that. Uh oh. That's, uh, necessary since he just kind of sends out like when he comes out with his videos, he'll. DM people, including me, and say, hey, do you want to share this? I I don't think he that would be necessary, but if it is, then fair enough. You know, if someone's genuinely violated the terms of service, if someone's genuinely done something remember, wrong, I Remember, think... she just presented this story as a slam dunk, and Zan took one second to show that she was being dishonest. Gets that. But, you know, you see, and I think that censorship can happen in lots of different ways as well, and you see it Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm getting into a bit of a, a rant here. But the point is, like, historically, when people have been told, no, you're not allowed to criticize the church or we're going to burn you at a stake. No, uh, we are going to arrest you if you have socialist opinions. No, we are going to um, arrest you if you have nationalist opinions or if you to speak out against Stalin. We're going to just put you in front of a firing squad. Stalin. That kind of censorship will just keep it basic like there because we can get into all the convoluted stuff happening today with big tech. But that basis, that's what I'm talking about is you know, genuine oppression and government shutting up and censoring genuine critiques and genuine questions and concerns about powers that be. Okay, so you, you're cool with like TOS or like, um, are you cool with like Twitter TOS? Like if someone breaks the TOS that you agree to, um, then someone getting banned, that's completely okay? Depends what the TOS is and also depends how it's being applied. For example, you see on YouTube, okay, they've got the TOS where you can't, you can't talk about shootings and violence and this kind of stuff or you'll be demonetized. And I think that to an extent is a type of censorship saying we're going to take away your income. If you I will about say, I think that I like, I personally like the vaping, but I think the rings are too much during this se type of segment. That's my one critique. I I'm impressed with your ring blowing skill, but I think it's a little too much personally. Certain issues. And um, you're good at you it saw though. What happened is lots of people who ended up talking about mass shootings, such as Casey Neistat, even just fundraising for it, had strikes on their channels and were demonetized. I did too. But for some reason, mainstream figures, I can't remember what his name, one of the hosts of The Tonight Show, could do a huge monologue on shootings and remain monetized. Which makes you wonder, is this once again one of these classism problems where you have an elite class all protecting each other and all allowing each other to talk and say certain things and have certain conversations, but if the lower class 
the people that aren't in the inn talk about it, they'll be demonetized and have their income taken away. All right. Because they want to control the narrative and they want to control the wealth. And I think how those Ooh, TOS boy. are applied, we all know are not applied fairly. We've seen it before time and time again. And that's worth critiquing and worth talking about. All right. I am someone who who does a lot of studying into YouTube's algorithm and how the behind the scenes works with it. And I can mm -hmm. assure you that it is not a most likely not some bias against smaller creators. What seems to occur is the reason why a lot of my content, about 90% of it maybe, is demonetized. Or not demonetized, but like yellow dollar sign or red dollar sign. I very rarely get the green. I get like a lucky two or three green dollar signs in a row, and it's a really good day. I, I smile. Um, the reason why this tends to happen is... The, the reason why YouTube implemented their demonetization policy was to help them keep ads on the platform. A lot of people rely on YouTube in order to make a living. And most people on YouTube aren't making content that's, you know, controversial. Most people are Minecraft Let's Players or vloggers or people doing stuff that advertisers aren't going to have an issue with. But when you have hardcore political topics, currently happening events being discussed, advertisers get really iffy about that. And they get really mad if, it, if they find out their ads are playing on something they don't want it to play on because that could get their company in trouble. This is just a symptom of capitalism. No, so YouTube's actually, in a position where actual username, Zan has killed at this debate so far. Protect their income and the income of their and creators. And I'll give you the reasons why I believe that They have to implement a system that, that those advertisers will agree on. It allows them to grade that content be like, okay, is this too, too yikesy for us to run ads on? All right, there we go. Now, YouTube's a very big platform. A lot of people make content on it. Most... To the, in the grand scheme of things, nobodies. I'm a nobody compared to Jimmy Fallon or John Oliver. Um, most of these uh, people like us cannot be graded on an individual level by YouTube. Maybe we'll get lucky, and if we submit a regrade of our videos, a review, then maybe we'll get the green dollar sign, or the, an actual person will review it more closely. But that usually can't be done. But someone like John Oliver, Jimmy Fallon, larger figures that have a larger media presence, typically YouTube can trust them not to break their TOS or do anything that advertisers would get mad about because they run on TV and they get advertisements there all the time. So okay. this is more so. of a of a capitalism problem than a elite is keeping the, the little guy down problem. I Normally, I would agree with you, and I think you are making a valid point here, but it doesn't explain people like Shoe on Head, for example, who just put out a video on Hell World or whatever, mm -hmm. and she got demonetized, completely not getting any profit from it, and yet YouTube is still playing ads on her videos. So they're literally just taking away the income of smaller creators that may compete with Shu our- is a huge creator, by the way. Your mainstream outlets, while still making money off them, and while still keeping advertisers on their videos. I'm so pretty that sure like that still doesn't add up with the argument you're making here, which I don't entirely disagree with and think is a valid analysis. I forget what his name was, but I know there was a YouTuber that does like deep dives into the YouTube algorithm and how to break it, talked about this problem and how Wait, of course she knows of Shoe on Head. Lauren Southern and Shoe on Head used to be friends. Yeah. Like way back in the day. Of course she does. They were friends IRL for like a while. Not anymore though a glitch because this guy does like deep dives into the youtube algorithm but from my understanding the reason why shuan yeah, i love shuan me, me and our friends i love her videos on on uh hell world they're very good videos um the most recent one that she uploaded discussed we're not gonna talk a lot about of stuff Shu, that's no, going on no, right no. now it's obviously not advertiser friendly that's easily going to get demonetized or at least the yellow dollar sign um and she probably knew that going in as for ads playing on the video anyway from my understanding that was a glitch it's a convenient glitch for youtube but nonetheless from the experts yeah. that i've that i've seen that like built their entire channels and investigating the youtube algorithm and how to exploit it they've said it is also a glitch so right great, okay yeah but even even the point you've made there which is they can trust these mainstream media outlets more and know that they're going to be more safe with advertisers that's still a continuation of implementing and supporting the class system that tries to prevent you know poor, lower class, smaller creators from breaking yeah, into true, big time right. and making money off doing it. And I think that needs to be questioned and that needs to be challenged. And I also, you know, I think most people would agree, left wing or right wing, whatever their views may be, that we have seen over time the TOS not applied properly. We have seen it unfairly applied. And if, if I'm wrong, if the TOS is never being misused, if it's always correct, uh, maybe I... Maybe I am wrong. I don't know. I don't think I am, though. <laughs> sure. TOS can never be applied completely equally until we have a... Like with Twitter, YouTube, all these systems, these are all run by algorithms and bots. Um, typically, unless it's something that gets a shit ton of media attention, there is no way that YouTube is able to go over the... I think it's like 4 million hours of footage are uploaded to YouTube every day. It's something insane. Same goes for Twitter. Like millions upon yeah. millions upon millions of tweets being uploaded every day. This is all done by robots. And robots, maybe sometime in the future when we have ultra high advanced quantum computing, maybe then they'll be able to perfectly apply TOS. Right now, that's I was not born in a highly conservative family. We're going to be talking about that next week in my spiritual deconstruction video, which I'm sure will be very interesting to everyone. Seriously, I'm going to talk about uh, leaving my cult. Leaving the cult, well, my cult, leaving the cult that I grew up in and how I did that and what I think about it now, my experiences, how I got into it, all of that. Next week.
always going to be the case. The people that are going to have direct action done upon them by the company uh, that runs whatever platform, getting banned or getting unbanned, it's typically going to be done when it drums up a large media uh, uh, frenzy about it, right? Like if it gets trending on Twitter um, that someone was falsely taken down. I mean, I, I'm pretty close to the YouTube drama community. I've, I've sort of made friends with a lot of those people. There are completely apolitical YouTubers that get falsely striked down all the time for no reason whatsoever, and they get brought back when enough people on Twitter make a big fuss about it and at YouTube. I don't think this is so much a deliberate agenda by like the elites or whatever. I think this has to do with the incompetent with the incompetence of a company that has no other way of like regulating this massive platform and how many mm -hmm. people use it. I think that's part of it and I won't discount that at all because I do think that um, that's an absolutely fair analysis, but we've also like we've observed on a large level where you know they would have individually analyzed both because they're big figures. This this hypocrisy and not applying things uh, evenly taking place, like with Donald Trump when he was taken off Twitter and every platform, even he was even take off, taken off Pinterest as if Trump's sitting there with pin boards, making up how he's gonna arrange his floral, you know, arrangements in his house. But um, why was Trump banned? Saw him banned. I, I, he, he was banned because they alleged that he was promoting rioting and they alleged that he was promoting, you know, uh, an insurrection. Even though he tweeted, he tweeted something that you know some people would interpret True. as well. I guess this is what happens when you rig an election, and for a few, for saying that the election was rigged, um, and also even though he posted after, go home in peace and don't behave this way. But we know for ages, tons of Democrats have accused the Russians of stealing elections. They've accused Trump of being an invalid president. We've seen Ka Colin nope. Kaepernick come out and say support rioting and not get banned off Twitter. So this has been an une like this this application of banning people for apparently or potentially supporting riots and for saying elections are rigged it's only used one way very often lauren i didn't see a yeah they published a, being, twitter published a blog about this being banned for saying russians stole the election so lauren you've i have bad news you have you have stepped on my trap card so oh, okay. trump's banning was because for one he alleged that the he repeatedly over the course a long period of time alleged that he won the election not that oh something might have happened that he won the election the democrats stole it it was illegal and he when his right when he said stand back and stand by you can interpret that however you like but even once this insurrection happened at the capitol he said you're very special i appreciate that you did this but this is what happens when you steal the election this is why he got banned a lot of people saw it he obviously that's broke what, tons of other tos that's what mm -hmm. i said on top I of that on top of that um the uh, what was the other thing that you brought up that, after the Trump not thing? Not what she said. She just. Uh, I said stolen election and riots. Oh yes, both the things you're mentioning so, slightly differently. So, so you <laughs> argued that it was slanderous for the uh, the Democrats to argue, or for like the mainstream media Democrats. I didn't say slanderous. People. I said they. Too or it was the same thing. It was comparable. Said elections were illegitimate, the, which is why people are getting banned for saying the election results they, were illegitimate. They invested so this. Ban one side they, they investigated saying, this, and they found that Russia Gate. It wasn't Trump colluding, but it was Trump's administration and the Republican Party colluded with Russia to leak those things about the Democrats to help him in the election. There was collusion found. There were prosecutions that so happened over this. So the court wait, documents wait, are completely wait, available. Wait, okay, so this was a good point. Again, you are giving facts and she is giving nothing. She's saying they got rid of Trump and you're like, well, actually, here we go. Here's the actual facts of the situation. And here's how you find out the truth. I think that was good. I... I completely disagree with that analysis of the Mueller report. But way before that, before there was any any investigations and any conclusion to investigations, people were saying Russians stole the election, and they weren't getting banned. Because it had already been found that the Russians were paying for ads on on things like uh, Facebook, that the Russians were working to help get Trump elected. Okay, okay, so, okay. That had already been found. So now we've, so now we've the collusion that was the part working. that had to be proven. So now, we were dis now we've discovered that CNN was working to get Biden into office, is that election stolen? Can I now say the election was stolen by CNN and not get banned? Did CNN hack the RNC to, to leak information about Trump? No, they said they controlled the minds of the people with propaganda to try to get Trump out of office. Can I say that the election was stolen by CNN now without getting banned? I don't think that's Should comparable, I no. That? I don't think that's comparable to leaking you know, so, information so from the party. You're saying that because Russians bought bots to spread information, that's stealing an election, but I can't say what so CNN openly says. The reason why you heard people one say- one of the largest platforms in America to try to spread propaganda to get Trump reason, out of office, the, that isn't the same. The reason why you heard random libs on Twitter saying that the election was hacked by uh, by the Russians was because it had already been revealed that the Russians were spreading misinformation on platforms to try to get Trump elected. That's where that came from. The Democrats did not try to overturn the election. I really wish you'd had to the camera. That would have been awesome. After Biden won right. the election. And the reason why now Russiagate ended up being true was because after all the investigations, they found that, yes, Trump's administration, the Republican Party, worked with the Russians to hack the DNC and spread that, uh, spread that stuff, the emails about Hillary, to help get Trump elected. That's what was found. There was collusion. It wasn't between Trump and the, and the Russians, to be fair. That's why Trump didn't get uh, in any trouble legally for it. However, people in Trump's administration and people that Trump worked with did, because there was collusion. It was found. The court documents are there. You can look Wait, them up. Let me ask you. 
How much money did, uh, do you know how much money the Russians spent on ads? I have no clue. No, not off the top of my head. Okay, it wasn't even a fraction, not even a slight fraction of what Biden spent on the election or even what CNN would spend on a couple. Biden's running for president. What? days of media. They spent $100,000 on Facebook ads. And you're trying to allege that that's comparable to CNN spending four years of primetime TV trying to get their candidate elected? That's, Wait, not, why are that's you not even remotely comparable. Why are you going back to the people? I'm not talking about C... Holy shit, I'm sorry. I'm getting a little bit frustrated, but I'm gonna try to keep my... I'm gonna try to keep my cool, okay? Why do you okay. keep going back to comparing what came out from the Mueller investigation and the numerous investigations that were done by the U.S. government to find out whether or not there was collusion between Trump's administration, his, um, and his election. You just admitted there was no collusion between Trump and the Russians. You were saying- Trump's administration. Trump's administration and his, um, his, uh, uh, his, like, running party. So what was the exact thing that uh, the Russians did that won Trump the election? The Republican Party and Trump's administration, not Trump, people in Trump's administration, worked with the Russians to hack the DNC to leak those emails from Hillary's private server. So Hillary was doing illegal things, and that got exposed. That's still and... collusion with the Russians. That's where the the collusion thing came from. Okay, so Hillary was Wait, doing... Wait, we're not... Whoopsies! She fucked up again! I'm not trying to argue in favor of Hillary here. I, the election was, like, back in 2016. I'm not trying to argue that. That's collusion. So you're saying people having access to more information, real legitimate information about what the other candidate was doing, won Trump the election. Okay. Wait, people went to jail for, for colluding with the Russians okay, for this. We we're okay. colluding with an enemy country to hack into a, 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 a government party in our country. Well, I guess not our country, but in America, an enemy country, they colluded with another country, this is treason, to leak information okay, on another party. That's where Russiagate came from. That was what came of it. This was really good. This was really good. There, there were convictions. You can look it up. The court documents are public. There's some redacted stuff because for, for national security, but it is completely available there. This isn't a secret. Okay, fine. And it's also not a secret that, and, and that's why I actually, I don't think that people should have been banned. I'm not arguing that people should have been banned from Twitter or Facebook for talking about Russian collusion. I have never argued that once. You guys on the progressive side of things, Democrats, big tech are arguing that people shouldn't be allowed to talk about potential problems with the election that Biden won. No one has argued that people should be censored for talking about potential collusion with the Trump Hillary election. It's only one side arguing there should be censorship. What? Well, I'm saying there is legitimate information showing CNN colluded to try to get Trump out of office, and you're not taking any of that seriously, my, and you are still supporting censorship of people who want to my, talk about it. My concern isn't people who want to talk about it. I'm talking about it right now. My problem is when people deliberately spread Excellent misinformation. Point. There were people on the right. On Excellent the point. You are, and so is she right now. These platforms that were saying the election was stolen, there was no evidence, no concrete evidence whatsoever that's been found that hasn't been debunked about there being a, that the Democrats stole the election, that Biden stole the election. There's no evidence whatsoever. It is completely unsubstantiated. And that rhetoric goaded conservatives into doing what they did on, at the Capitol um, on the 6th. Okay, so you don't think rhetoric of saying that Trump stole the election and that it was all the Russians that did it, which I do not agree. I don't think it was all. I don't think it was all the Russians, the but I think I they. Think that, uh, you don't think that rhetoric can cause riots and cause disorder, which it did. I was there. I was at the riots that occurred and mm -hmm. destroyed massive areas of D.C. when Trump went into office what? on uh, inauguration. And surprisingly, what? no one talked about that much. The problem, no one the problem, talked to nobody. Nobody heard about the riots. I went to some riots that nobody heard about that destroyed D.C., but nobody heard about them. Trust me, bro. I don't have but the difference is that the left was right. I don't have a problem with. Oh, so the left were right to do that. They were right to destroy no, and destroy people's businesses. They were right about Russian collusion. Okay, so uh -oh. why did people ban right away before any investigation had properly taken place? And you know what? It looks like that. It looks like Trump supporters you know, were right that there was some form of rigging as well, which is with CNN propaganda. That's not what rigging is. Do you, we're talking about collusion, okay, not rigging. So when it, com when it comes to okay, nobody so argued, know, nobody were, argued the election was rigged. The Russians stole no, the election. There nobody, were, there were nobody with any, nobody with any credibility argued that the Russians hacked into the election, D like for sure. Nobody argued that. There were like random people okay. on Twitter and Facebook, but we're talking about something care. that was confirmed by an investigation about, by the I'm government about, and something with no evidence. It's an ins inconsistent application of the TOS, and we know that. They yeah, say she sounds she, she sounds totally unhinged. Stealing elections when they are. And they talk, they say they ban people when they talk about starting violence. Let's look at a more solid example here instead of arguing the nuances of the Mueller report. Kaepernick, Colin Kaepernick mm -hmm. directly supported a revolution and violence against the government and has not been banned from Twitter. So you can agree with his support of that revolution. You can agree with his support of that violence, but that still points out the what I'm saying here, which is there is an inconsistent application of the TOS. 
So Colin Kaepernick's statement was, when civility leads to death, revolting is the only logical reaction. He said on Instagram and Twitter, the cries for peace will, drain, will rain down, and when they do, they will land on deaf ears because your violence has brought this resistance. Wait. That's almost identical to what Trump was saying. That's not even close to what Trump was saying. Trump was saying, well... True, beta oh, audio. I haven't, right. Silent. I haven't. Beta audio, though. Beta audio! ...actually saying we have to fight back, where Trump was saying this is what happens when you rig an election. And once again, people would disagree that civility leads to death. And people would disagree with Trump that the election was rigged. Wait, so you think that him saying that people fighting for civil rights and Trump lying about the election being stolen because he's salty, and then, th then those people proceeding to go to the Capitol and try to break in, which by the way, they're all getting arrested. Their, their identities are being collected by the government. They're being it's arrested. Crazy to me that Do you think these are comparable? Rioting going on in Portland and of course they're focusing on that. It was an insurrection attempt. People, people who have taken over dozens of federal buildings over the last year, who created their own autonomous radical zone called Chaz, in which multiple people died, and they're not searching for any of those. What does that have to do with anything? People. I'm saying everyone should be found out who led to the death of people who tried to take over federal buildings. Everyone, not just one side. It sounds to me like you're saying only one side should be arrested for doing that. And the point here is, is people are going to disagree with Trump's statements and cause and find them non-factual at all. And people are going to disagree with Kaepernick's cause and find them non-factual at all. And you, who knows? We're, we're watching the case right you now. Understand. And he may walk. And you understand that, that the vast... She would... sounds breathless here. Like she's actually like... <laughs> If you can hear her huffing and puffing. Majority of these BLM protests, 93% have been completely peaceful. That this is even close oh to my Trump. Gosh, and guess what? 99% of Trump rallies have been peaceful. Like, why, why, why are you Lynn, trying why are to you excuse trying... the violence? Because I'm talking about I'm a specific saying, occurrence. I'm not the one that's trying to excuse the... I'm not the I'm one that's talking... trying to excuse what happened at the Capitol. I'm talking... Trump rallies are peaceful. You're the one trying to because... excuse the BLM violence. Because I'm talking about a very specific riot that happened, an attempt to break into our Capitol, and and there were people there that ha clearly had the attention to kill or kidnap uh, government officials, people that are elected officials, and you're trying to paint it as though BLM is this violent movement. It seems that way, at least. Uh, okay. I feel like it's a reasonable uh, way to interpret it. Was there not literally an assassination of a Patriot prayer member by a Black Lives Matter member with a tattoo of BLM on his neck with nope in the last year let's please do not gloss over political rad radicalism do you think this is even word, what, what is up with the what about is them I am not doing it with the Capitol. I am saying that is wrong and they shouldn't have done that and they should have been arrested for that. The only thing happening here is you are not acknowledging the radicalism, the actual fucking terrorism and murder of individuals by Black Lives Matter, the taking over of federal buildings by Black Lives Matter, the literal autonomous zone created by radicals in which multiple people died in. Can you at least acknowledge that and acknowledge it was wrong? Because I've acknowledged the radicalism on my side and said it was wrong. This isn't a what about is this is holding you. I don't know. I don't know much about radicalism. the I don't know much about the, the Chaz thing. I think it was like pretty large. And insubstantial, and I'm not a big fan of it. And I think that, and I think that, and I think that rioting, and I think that rioting typically is, is at the at best, it's bad optics, and at worst, it's probably not good because depending on where you're rioting. What about murdering people? What about murdering people? What about the probably not good. Man who was murdered? Not good. Probably not good. No, no, no not good. a fan of it. No, not very. Uh, okay. Don't think highly of it. Then we agree. Then we agree. Okay, so you don't. You, you are. You, we agree that. Uh, it is not comparable what Colin Kaepernick said to what Trump did when he was rallying his uh, fan base to attack the Capitol. I think both. I think both caused radicalism and violence, and both should be condemned. But I don't necessarily think either of them should be banned from Twitter. That's the only disagreement here is that you're being inconsistent, and I'm being consistent. Mm, okay. I'm pretty sure I've been pretty consistent, but all right. Wait, how have I been inconsistent? <laughs> In both instances, Trump rallied. Good question. I don't even. I think it's questionable whether Trump rallied up people. I don't think he rallied up people to go Good and question. cause an insurrection. That's one interpretation of his tweet, saying he potentially defended it by saying this is what happens. Oh, but no. he certainly wasn't telling people to go do it, and he tweeted out after, be peaceful and go home. Whereas Colin Kaepernick has actively called for a revolution and actively called for violence. That's the difference between these tweets. And I'm not even saying Kaepernick should be banned or taken off Twitter if they actually follow no the answer. PLS, he No would. answer. But you are trying to argue that somehow Kaepernick should be absolved of this rhetoric that has led to because murder, Kaepernick that has hasn't... people's shops being so burned down. So for starters, mass riots Colin for Kaepernick, Colin Kaepernick isn't the president for one. Two, from my understanding, Colin Kaepernick he still didn't has tweet mass it out. amount of power over people and their opinions. Apparently, more than the president himself because he didn't get banned from Twitter, whereas the president has lost his voice on every platform in the country. The president had protections, TOS protections, for years. He didn't get banned until right before they he left office. Off yes, after he they got out of office because he kept on breaking everything. TOS, they and they didn't ban less. him. We're doing less they than what they voluntarily, Twitter voluntarily didn't ban Trump violence. for breaking TOS. Trump literally 
Trump has literally told his fan base to go Trump told his fan base to go home in peace. Kaepernick has not done Trump that said once. you are Trump said I love you you're very special but this is what you all need to go home you're very special you're my my beautiful little pog champs but this is what happens when you steal the election from me by okay. the way. So the difference right so the difference between the Trump tweet is Trump said this is what happens but you guys should still go home and not do this and Kaepernick just said cause violence. Sure. If, if Colin Ka if Colin Kaepernick got banned, I probably wouldn't really care. But to be completely honest okay, so with you, you I don't think these are even close. <laughs> Do you think they're comparable? Do you think they're comparable? No, I don't. I think Kaepernick okay. is way worse. Why? Because he's calling for violence, whereas Trump was at at worst are, wait, maybe excusing are, it. At worst, whereas Colin Kaepernick is actively calling. Are you a consequentialist? What does this have to be? A consequentialist I, is somebody no, who not... judges like how bad something is based on the outcome of doing that thing. Give me the context for it. Okay. So Ow! This is such a bad look on her part. What Trump did resulted in a full-scale attack on our cap, on well, my capital, in an attempt for an insurrection. I'm sorry, but if you think those larpers were actually going to take over the capital, it's. Uh, what do you? Continue. When I say take over, they broke in. Bad look, bad look. Just so you know, no one liked the capital siege. No one. No one. This is a very bad look for her. They they a got in. They were looking attack. for yes. They were there with handcuffs. They were looking to kidnap uh, uh, public officials. There that, there is security cam footage. Of and over that's the closest. Buildings. That is the closest they that that uh, uh, the that's the closest the Confederacy ever got to uh, taking over the government. Considering it was the first time in history that a Confederate flag flew in the American capital. So there's that. There's also security cam footage of, of security guards. Actually There's security footage of, of the vice president having to run down a hallway because a bunch of the rioters came around a corner and they almost got him. <laughs> Someone sniffed AOC's shoes. No one was trying. They to had to evacuate it. That was a fake tweet and she's report she's saying as it as if it was true. I think what they did was wrong. The police had to shoot any, them. Four people died. Even, if there's even a small part of you that thinks these LARPers were going to take over the government and start, I don't know, their, their way of the mega play. fake Ben Shapiro tweet. It was a fake tweet. Okay, <laughs> I guess then I can easily respond if you think that like a bunch of BLM protesters, like, uh, what is it, f eight percent, seven percent of them, if you think that, or no, not even, how many, how many percentage of them are, are peaceful? Let me just, uh, let me make sure, 90, 93 percent. So if you think that six percent of these protests if you think 6% of these LARPers that are actually causing violence to these protests are going to really harm the country, then I guess you're taking it too seriously, too. Because if we're going to apply it, then we might as well apply it equally. I take an, a full-scale attack on our capital way more seriously. These LARPers wouldn't harm the country. I said they weren't going to take over the government. I think they did harm to the country. As much as I think BLM has Sorry, done more harm to the country. You've got this very neat trick of responding to things that I've never said. I have debate tactics. This entire debate. But, uh, yeah, no, I think both are. She looks bad here the country and i've been consistent on this the entire time but i think oh he was only off by one percent chill yeah sustained protests and violence by blm has added up to significantly more you've... than the insurrectionists who just got way more media attention i feel like you've deliberately tried to downplay the effects of what the um the insurrectionaries of the capital did by calling them larpers and saying they didn't even get you, close to anybody you use true you called her out and now she's really mad the word larp first mate you're the one who called the people who made Chaz LARPers, and that's when yeah. I started using the word LARP. You are projecting all of the things- They're LARPers, you're saying, but you're trying to downplay what they so, did. So when I use the word LARP, I'm downplaying, but when you use the word LARP- I don't- why are you- why are you focusing on the word LARP? led to the deaths of multiple people. I know- listen, Lauren, you're I know LARP is a funny it. word. I know LARP is a funny word. It's- it's fun to say. I'm not talking about them being LARPers. I'm not lasering on you calling those people LARPers. We're talking about what they actually did, and what they intended to go there to do. And what they- and what- and four people died as well! The- the, the capital security had to shoot people because they were about to get in to an area of the building where there were elected officials, and those people were there. There were people out Everybody there with guillotines and gallows- Every normie knows this, by the way there saying to, to cut off Mike Pence's head. There were people searching around offices trying to take information from uh, elected officials' laptops. There were people there with handcuffs looking to kidnap, but uh, why else do they have handcuffs? Looking to kidnap um, elected officials. I think it's pretty different. Both are bad, but pretty different than rioting in the streets. Pretty different. Okay, so once again, you have glossed over. Like, I still have not once tried to excuse the actions at the Capitol. I think- She just did. And everybody heard her. That your number is- potentially wrong because there were people who died of an overdose. They claimed a cop was killed by rioters who actually wasn't and had to be correct. This had to be corrected later by the media. Uh, once again, I still have never said that that was okay. You are trying to say that. Thank you, Silax. That is different or on some mass different scale 
than all of the rioting that has gone on for sustained for over a year that has taken over multiple federal buildings led to 93 percent of the protests have been peaceful i condemn the rioting i don't think and it's good 99 percent of trump support trump rallies have been peaceful. we're not talking about trump rallies you're and the I'm one that brought up the comparison about... I'm talking okay, about so, a very specific event, and you are trying to draw a comparison between a ex-football okay, player. I'm talking about very specific events too. I'm talking about rioting that has been going on. The rioting is bad, and I don't support country. it. The rioting is bad, and I don't support it. Well, why are you trying to say it's because it's you're trying to? You are. What happened at the Capitol when it is. I'm not saying it's better. I'm saying it's not as bad. I'm saying so it's it wasn't not as bad to assassinate people, to leak multiple deaths, to uh, kill. I'm not talking. Not as bad to I'm not talking about the one you're talking. Wait, why do you keep going? You're so you're switching around. You're switching around from riots to, to a very particular. That at least is going to be repaired with the infinite government. Body. They were trying the to. Ki they were trying to kill businesses. people. They were trying to kill people. And by the BLM way, BLM rioters successfully killed people. And I don't support that. Whenever it happens, I don't, I don't support, support it. But why do you keep going? But how? Why is it? Why is it that you keep on bringing BLM, bring up BLM riots, and then when I go back to the Capitol, then you bring up the instance where, where like they assassinated one guy, which is horrible, and I don't support it. But you keep on trying to bring up that one instance, and I guess ostensibly try to connect it back to Colin, Ka Colin Kaepernick, when the reason for the riot was very specifically because Trump kept on saying the election yes! was stolen, and they wanted to yes! punish our, our yes! government officials for not keeping Trump in office. This why Xander Hall just completed the narrative circle. His narrative was intact, while hers was impossible to understand. That is a major win. That is a rhetorical win right there. Xander Hall got his narrative out clearly. Lauren was all over the place. No one will walk away understanding what Lauren was saying. Everyone will walk away understanding what Xander Hall was saying. Why do you think that these are comparable in terms of who holds the responsibility for what? Because that's what this argument was because about. you've got a bunch of Black Lives Matter rioters saying we need to uh, hold the government accountable as well. X, this with is the last one. Literal, yeah, I see guillotines with Trump's head in them. Like, you're making these comparisons about the Where were those guillotines? The Capitol when it has happened the other way around a million times and sustained... Also, small years. note, earlier in this debate, she... she um, earlier in this de debate, she defended burning effigies of the president. Now she's condemning burning effigies of the of the president where were those guillotines the, okay what we're arguing here let's see okay I can, people can post pictures there have been guillotines in the streets with trump's head attached where to though pages. not even not at the capitol while hundreds of people thousands of people are trying to break in and are specifically out to capture and behead that okay, particular so elected representative somehow, somehow it's worse if you take over a building with nancy pelosi in it than if you terrorize and take over uh some poor black person's shop you think it's worse just because fucking Nancy Pelosi is in the building, but it's We're okay talking if about it's which figure? Shop in Minneapolis. The reason why this argument happened, wrong. I think they're but, both uh, wrong. Yes. The reason why this conversation came up is because you brought up Cap Colin Kaepernick's quote. I brought yes. up Trump's the quotes. The conversation we're actually having is whether it's okay to incite rebellion or not. I think it's wrong. Do you think it's wrong in any instance? To unless incite rebellion? Literally, it, unless you can pr prove that the government is tyrannically, uh, you know, committing genocide and severely oppressive and all these things and peaceful democracy is not an option and you have gone past those points of being able to have civil debate and past those points of being able to you know enact change in your communities i do not think it's okay to incite civil rebellion whether you're colin kaepernick or donald trump what do you think neither are okay but the responsibility or how much how comparable what colin, Ka colin kaepernick did to donald trump the comparison there is not even close in terms of the outcome and how harmful it is true and again, the intention the question here the, the question is whether twitter applies the tos appropriately and whether it treats people who incite rebellion with the same uh with the same treatment and they don't and i've proven that and you're just arguing the reason why twitter didn't the reason why twitter didn't ban colin Ka colin kaepernick is besides being like a i don't even think there's that much attention on him anymore in turn like he's not even nearly as popular and well known and being listened to as much as he was Wait, back so in like 2018 you're allowed to violate the tos which i don't think he is unpopular, you're asking why you're asking why he wasn't like banned should i ask you why insert lefty here that called for uh uh this like 100 follower account didn't get banned like of course he broke I'm not the, the one arguing that the tos is perfect i'm the one arguing it's imperfect i'm not arguing that's perfect either then You're where, where arguing do... that it's been applied fairly. No, I'm not. I've never, fairly. I've never said once that the TOS okay, applied okay, fairly. So we, so we agree. Okay, so we agree then. Okay. We're arguing over nothing. I, I think that the problem with Twitter and Facebook and YouTube giving them this much power over people's speech. First of all, I don't think private companies. She looks so bad here. And second, she looks so bad here. What the fuck? That's what the discussion. What the fuck? She doesn't even know what he's saying. She's so. She's like literally lost. on that, that Trump, what Trump did was deliberate and was deserving of being banned, and what Colin Kaepernick did was probably something that that Twitch could like logically ban them, ban him for breaking TOS. Then I don't think we disagree, right? 
We disagree on that, and you know we do, because you're being inconsistent. But I'm trying to move on here. Overall, you'd give the book a positive rating, it sounds like. Yeah, I like the book. The book's, pre the book's pretty good. Thank yeah. you. All right. Like if you guys want to pick it up for your kids, you can get it on Amazon, The ABCs of Morality. It's got a positive review from Xanderall. I think I'm going to add a review on the back that says, Drops Mad Bars. Uh, and we might just change X's for Xander Hall in a uh, lefty edition we release. <laughs> if, if that actually happens, I'm going to buy it. I, I will buy a lefty edition. Or just in a, one single copy where X is for Xander Hall, I will buy it, okay? All right. I'll, I'll buy make, a second I, copy. I could actually make that happen. But uh, I'll send you a copy as a thank you for having a fun little debate with me. Are there any, uh, how long has it been? I think it's been, it's been two hours. It's been a I couple think. hours, eh? Yeah. Are there any other last little notes you want to bring up? Because I did have a few uh, little things I wanted to work on after this, but... Um, I can stay to... I guess the final meme would be, uh, do you vape? I did. Oh, you and did. I'm gonna, oh. I'm, gonna, well, I'm gonna expose myself here. I actually struggled a bit with smoking for a while. Not very trad life of me, you know. But uh, yeah, I started vaping to try to try to mitigate that. And since then, I've managed to mostly, mostly get rid of both in my life. But I, I did hear you in the preamble to this that you wanted me to do a little vape and unfortunately i don't have a vape on me so you're just gonna have Oof. to vape one out for me all righty I, I i appreciate the the honestly honesty i was curious my chat wants you to say a phrase would you say trans rights oh no <laughs> i think trans people should have the same rights as anyone else like, like all right that's you know, that's this is what equal opportunity is you know yeah everyone gets treated the same and judged on the same scale good move but can but can you say trans rights though people want to hear the exact sentence Okay, well, what is, what is the what what does this mean on a larger scale? Because if it just means they have this looks so good right now, by the way, this looks so good. Same rights as everyone else, then trans rights, my dudes. All right. Can you say white rights, Xander Hall? Do white people have rights? I love white people. Okay, I love white people. Uh, white rights, of course. I think everybody deserves rights. <laughs> All right. Holy shit, that was so good. Okay, right. there you go. That's good. I'm glad we agreed. Look at this. This ended up being a really lovely agreement with just some. Some friendly spats here and there. <laughs> Alrighty. Did you have a fun time? I did. I had a good time. If you ever want to debate or chat about anything else, I'd be happy to. Alrighty. Well, um, hopefully you have a good night. I appreciate razzle. you coming on. And uh, maybe you can come on in the future for, I don't know, maybe we can do like a, a set topic or something like the trans issue stuff. We can talk about that yeah. more specifically if you ever want to come on again. And uh, yeah, have a good one. All right. You too. See ya. Bye. All right, everybody. All right. I need to pee. And when I get back, I am going to give you my take. My take is going, my, my whole read and all of my reasoning in one place. Let me go to the bathroom and I'll be right Holy back. Holy shit. We're only 20 subs from 9K. That's amazing. All right. Here we go. I think... This is one of the best debates I have seen since Destiny versus JonTron. I'm not kidding you. Yep, I mean that. I mean that. This one is a Hall of Famer. Yep, I really believe that. And I'm going to explain it. I'm going to explain why. Okay? Okay. I'm going to explain why. Let me explain why, okay? And the only reason why the JonTron debate wins is because nobody, because it exposed JonTron, whereas we already knew Lauren Southern was a racist. We already knew that Lauren Southern was a Nazi. But we didn't know that about JonTron. That's the only reason why. And yes, that is high praise. And I think that Zan deserves it here. I think that Zan deserves it. And here's why. Let me take a couple things, okay? First of all, first of all, I've watched it twice now. One time, I listened to it just for the memes, just for the fun of it, while out, while out having a day out with my partner, and I thought it was good. I went online, and I saw a lot of negative critique, and last night, I sat down, and I was like, huh, what did I miss? Maybe I missed some things. Maybe I need to go through and fact check it. So I did. And then today, I decided we were going to watch the whole thing online. Again, together. And I would commentate as we did. And I got to say, 
It's fucking good. It's goddamn good. All the way throughout, there is not a single moment where Lauren Southern looks good. Lauren Southern comes off like a triggered boomer SJW. She completely misgages Xander Hall's audience. She completely misgages the current pop culture atmosphere. She completely misgages what normies care about. She completely misgages what everyone's been talking about in politics for the last year. And I was worried. Okay? I was worried because... There is a risk in in debating over a children's book, but Xander Hall got her to stop talking about the book many times. Xander Hall, through the art of debate, made her point, made her prove herself wrong, because di because Xander Hall didn't have to push her. She went off about politics just from simple questions and that shows that the book is political where when she walked in she tried to say it wasn't so xander hall achieved a master stroke do you want to know what a master stroke is a master stroke of rhetoric is when you make someone destroy their own point from the beginning to the end of the debate and xander hall did that Xander Hall succeeded in illustrating why nobody should take Lauren Southern seriously. And he did so in an interesting manner that will appeal to young people because he's young and he knows what they like. And while there were mistakes, I think that most of the mistakes were very surface level mistakes and did not affect what I am looking for when I critique someone who is going up against a demagogue. In fact, I would argue that Xander Hall out, not only out-truthed, but also out-propagandaed Lauren Southern. So I gotta say, I think that this is pretty good. And Xander Hall, if you're still listening right now, this is very high praise. But it comes with a warning, okay? Do not let this very, very, very high praise from me go to your head. I want to see you do this again and again. And I want you to put as much, if not more, effort into future conversations as you did in this one. Learn from it. Get better. Don't let it go to your head. Because you can do this. And you were nervous yesterday... Or yesterday day before yesterday i know you were nervous but guess what you did it you fucking nailed it and you should be proud of yourself in my opinion you really should because i think this was really good i think this was really good and it does look like, by the way, this is a little bit more of the evidence, just so we know. Let me just show you. <laughs> this is how you know you've, 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 done a, you've done a good. The most important thing, this is Lauren Southern. The most important thing I learned about BreadTube from this debate is they just keep debunking documents which they've never actually read and therefore easily mistake debunks. She has nothing. She has nothing here. This is nothing. This is salt. 100 likes. She can't even get her own audience. Oof. That's bad, everybody. That's bad. Oh, and the flirting retweet. That's weird as hell. And let me explain another thing, by the way, because I know that a lot of people, I know that a lot of people are going to say, oh, but what about, oh, but what about, uh, what about platforming? Y'all, I want everyone, listen, here, here's a critique I have, okay? Here's a quick critique I have of the online, of uh, the online everyone, okay? Eh. Yeah. 
I agree with you, Silent, but let me let me explain this. There is no way that any neutral any normie comes to this um this interview and walks away thinking that Lauren Southern is a good person. There is no fucking way. I'm sorry, but for people who are like very, 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 very much um tuned in online. Um, and I know I do this, okay? And this is something I critique myself for and I've tried to get better about. When I'm listening to a debate, it is very easy for me to identify every single dog whistle and want to debunk every single dog whistle that comes up, to go, to jump on every single point that comes up. I know, and so do we all, right? We hate it when they get away with lying, but she lied poorly and Xander Hall chose carefully which things to jump on and he explained them so that normies will understand what he is saying this is going to be an exam this is an example of how you responsibly handle these issues because when normies come and watch xander hall's debate which i hope they will and i would love for you to crank the shit out of that video in the algorithm to get it in front of as many normies as possible because when normies watch this, they're going to walk away understanding what Xander Hall thinks, which is leftist and progressive, and not understanding what Lauren, Southers, L Lauren Southern thinks, which is right-wing and Nazi. I understand why people want, why people, all of us, every single one of us, um, it would have been a bad look, Xander Hall. I think you handled that correctly. Okay? I want, you, I want people to think about this. For all of us, we all know who Lauren Southern is. We all know everything about Lauren Southern. We know she shot flares at, at migrants, okay? Nobody else knows that. People who aren't us, people who aren't plugged into politics all the time, they won't even know what she's talking about. So Xander Hall made the right choice to not talk about stupid internet drama that only we care about. And instead... Xander Hall effectively made it impossible for her to use this as a prop for her book. And I think that's a big deal. I think that is a huge, huge win. So, I'm going to give the trophy, the big golden W, the hell-forged W, to Zan for this one. Because I think I think you did really good, Zan. I think you did really good. Yeah, absolutely. Um let me let me see